talk is money, honey. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. It's like bees to the honey. Honey, money, honey, money, honey. It's the sauce, cast, baby. Thank you. Look at that. Look at that crowd. You guys cheering? What's going on? <laughs> Thank you, Wally. Special episode <laughs> of the sauce cast today because one of our brothers in arms, big celebrity, podcaster, you know, I would say sort of alpha ish. Certainly a ladies' man. Our friend Russell Brand, my uh, CEO partner, Patrick Bet David, was just on his show a week ago. Boom, he just got canceled by the Matrix. So I brought an amazing panel of beauties and a beast here to have an amazing discussion today. Um, welcome to the Sauscast, only here on Valuetainment, the number one channel in the world for entrepreneurs. Uh, this is the sexiest, obviously, sexiest financial show in the world. This is where finance meets romance, as you don't know, or maybe you know or you don't know. My name is Adam Sazdik. This is the Sazcast. And usually, Natalia, I'm sure you're watching. I love you. Feel better. She'll be here uh, hopefully on Thursday. Her and my friends here have one goal, one objective, one purpose, and that is for you guys out there to get paid, laid, and do it your way. So I bring an amazing panel of beauty and beast here today to have an amazing discussion of what's going on in the world, regarding pop culture, regarding dating, regarding relationships, and of course, regarding money. So um, before we get into meeting our amazing panel, here's some of the stories that we're gonna be covering today. Um, obviously, I sort of alluded to it already, Russell Brand matrix attack. What's going on here? Are these allegations true? Some of you guys may or may not know what, is, what the allegations are. That's fine, I'm not asking you to be up to speed. I'll inform you, that's kind of my job. Your job is A, to look pretty, B, sound smart, or both. You can do what you want to do, either one. Um, but there's a lot going on with that, and then a lot of celebrities basically weighed in on what they thought, um, specifically um, having his back. We had Candace Owens on uh, the podcast on Thursday. We actually kind of talked about these types of conversations with her. Does anybody know who Candace Owens is? Yes. Absolute beautiful woman. Uh, fun as hell, uh, funny, was clowning. I was clowning her a little bit. We had a great time. She's pregnant. So she, we're going to react to some of the stuff that she said. We're going to talk about why some women think that if you're a Joe Rogan fan, that's a red flag. We'll have that discussion. Do you listen to Joe Rogan? Yeah, I do. Okay, red flag. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about some of the reasons that some of these, I would say, disruptors in the podcasting world uh, and the digital world are being canceled. Could it be because of the, the rise of streaming and the death of cable and traditional news outlets? Uh, we'll have a conversation about is there a double standard between men, women, especially in terms of the age of consent? Should we believe all women? I don't know. We'll have that conversation with beautiful ladies here. Um, and then we'll talk about the rules to dating uh, an A-list or, or a high-value type man. So with that being said, if this is your first time watching, give us a like, give us a sub, so more friends like you, like-minded, smart, good-looking studs out there know about this show on Valuetainment. But if you're a repeat offender of watching the SauceCast, thank you guys for being here. Um, it's the SauceCast, baby. Thank you for that, Jorge. That's my guy. With that being said, let's meet our amazing panel. You know, uh, oftentimes they say, ladies first. Ladies first. Not here on the SauceCast, ladies and gentlemen. We have a stud in the house. I appreciate uh, that. David De Las Morenas. Good pronunciation. He looks white, but he's actually Latino. Spanish, Spanish, Spanish. Latino. Do you not identify as a Latino? I don't what know. What about a Latinx? From Spain? Is from that Spain? Latino? I feel like the Latino Do you like the tapas? That's Latin why your American. girl likes the tapas. He likes the tapas. So, David, uh, massive, massive social media presence. How to Beast is uh, your channel. Correct. Right? Uh, dating, fitness. Uh, you have a company called Edge Lifestyle. Correct. So let's tell, tell us your story, brother. How did you end up on this panel with me, Valuetainment, and all these beautiful women? On the SauceCast. Well, I guess, uh, I'll, I'll try to keep it quick. Grew up in Boston, first job software engineer. Didn't really enjoy that. Quit, was a personal trainer. Kind of started the, uh, I guess, online presence on the side. Talking about my dating struggles, my day-to-day -day struggles. Little by little, the uh, channel shot up to like a million subs. I was making more from that and brand deals than, than the, uh, the software job. So I kind of went all in on that. We've launched some businesses since. Edge Lifestyle, the clothing brand, be one of them. Sick, brother. Mm -hmm. And I actually, it's some, a lesson for the, some men out there. 
Yeah, I've subbed to your channel for a while. You've had it for how many years? January 2017, is that right? Okay, January so you've had it for a while. But, you know, so six years ago, you were doing videos. Mm -hmm. You were skinnier. Mm -hmm. You didn't have a beard. Mm -hmm. You know, how old are you now? 33. 33. Yeah. So when you started, you were 26, 27? Yep. Gentlemen, take a look at this. Let's punch in on this guy. He's better looking in person, just so you guys know. <laughs> you know, one of my major themes, especially with men, is that good things take time. You know, men, as Tate would like to say when I did interviews with Tate, is that men are born as a blank slate. It's up to you to create the man you want to become. A lot of women, you know, I'm not saying that women can't improve and women can't get better in life, but a lot of women, especially growing up in Miami and South Beach, you can just be 21 and pretty and the world's your oyster. So a man, like no one's like, oh, you're young, you're 21, you're a stud. Yeah, get to work, homie. You're not getting anything for free. But the reason I'm saying that to you is because I saw those videos of you. You're not the man you are now, clearly. And it's not like we've ever met in person. I've followed you for years. I know you've said you watched our show, but how have you grown to become this type of guy? Well, I think it's true. I think society on average, right, it values men for success, maturity, experience, wealth. And on average, it values women for things like looks and youthfulness. So yeah. I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, in terms of how I got here. Yeah. Like what the to look like this. Like, I'm not going to ask you to pop your shirt off real quick. <laughs> but, dude, you're an actual freaking physical beast. It didn't happen overnight. Nor did your success. Nor did uh, money or, or status. Like, good things take time. So like, what's been the evolution? I feel like it's like achieving competence in one area and then maybe moving to the next area. For me, a lot of it started with fitness. Once yeah. I was feeling a little more confident in my body, moved on to dating where, I mean, bro, I, I lost my virginity at 21 for years. It was kind of painful seeing my friends, you know, date, have a lot of hookups while I was kind of felt like I was in, in the back yeah. seat. 21 these days is pretty, pretty old. Yeah, I don't exactly. Know. No, no, that's maybe the you, <laughs> These ladies might disagree. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, for the better, for the worse. I think it is pretty old. But um, yeah, so I think it kind of moved from fitness to achieving some competence in dating. And then once I had those things under yeah. my belt, I felt like, you know what? Because I didn't think that it was even going to be possible for me to have dating success or even to have a better looking body. And I think from there, it gave me a lot of confidence. You know, what else could we do? And, and that was kind of the start of YouTube, which was very scary for me with my background, putting myself out on camera. Why was it scary? Ah, bro, I thought like, ah, oh, these, you know, these people from high school, college. Who oh, they're probably, gonna judge me. Yeah, exactly. All that. People probably didn't even care what I was doing, but yeah. like, they're gonna see it. This guy's gonna be trying to be like this cool guy or something. And uh, yeah, I feel like you can take a tackle one frontier at a time and little by little. Dude, I love that story. Cause I, I think your, your story is really any man's story, huh. right? Where there's a lot of self-doubt. You're thinking about, you know, the haters. What are they going to say? What are my friends from high school going to say? Can I really do this? Can I? And, and what I always say is, yeah, you can, but it might take you 10 years. But you got to start with the first video. You got to start with the first call. You got to start with approaching the first girl, whatever it is, whether it's dating, whether it's money, whether it's getting hitting in the gym. Like, it's a cumulative effect and we're seeing, well, you said you're 33 now? 33. We're seeing a decade plus of actual work, and that's how you become the man you become. It's ugly at first, too. If you go back and watch some of the videos of 2017, of those, those oh, bro, it's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't go back and watch them, yeah. but yeah, it's ugly at first. But I think that's so true, because there's 21-year-olds out there who probably have no money, mm. probably are struggling getting girls, struggling to even shoot their first video, mm. but... You know, they always, they'll look at guys like you or guys like me or guys like PBD. And they're like, you know, they got money. They got success. They're surrounded by women. It's like, dude, we've all, have, we've all been broke. We've all got no ass. Mm -hmm. We've all been, like, sleeping on friends' couches. We all have that story. And if it was easy, everyone would do it. There's a reason that the 1% is called the one fucking percent. Mm -hmm. is because 99% of guys won't do what you've mm -hmm. done. So respect to you, bro. Respect to you. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Clap it up, ladies. Come on, have a little respect. <laughs> so you brought your wife here. <laughs> yeah, this is Julia. We, uh, we got married almost, not quite a year ago. Last October, though. Congratulations. Now, do you let her talk or no? Because I totally understand if she can't talk. I get it. We're going to move the microphone. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, of course. So Julia, <laughs> Julia, what's your story? How did you guys meet? Give us that story. And you're also a dating coach. Yes. Nice. Uh, we met in Boston when I was getting my master's, and we lived, like, what, three-minute walk from each other? A few blocks away downtown Boston, yeah. Yeah. 
We've been together for seven years. And who rolled up on who? How was that encounter? Who, who, did, he didn't have this beard, he didn't have that muscles no. at the time. <laughs> You're like, you invested in the right guy. Yes, uh, we matched on a dating app. Uh, we went to the same gym, so I had seen him a couple times. Um, I actually flaked on the first date, which is pretty awful. Uh, but then he hit me with a, well, the ball's in your court kind of thing, and then I texted him back, and it's been- Why'd crazy. you flake on the first date? I don't know. I think I just was nervous about uh, just the dating apps in general. I wasn't really using them before. I was in a previous relationship for a really long time. So it was like my first time kind of using the apps and talking to guys. And yeah, so. But then I have a rule. You're allowed one flake. Because we get it. People are busy. People are living their lives, especially if you meet on a dating app, what have you, whatever's going on. Life comes up. Life comes in the way. And if you're like actually respectful, and don't do it like 10 minutes before the date, because at that point it's like, mm. but if it's like the, the morning of or the day before and you're like, my grandma got sick, my cat had an it, whatever <laughs> it is, I get it. But if that happens twice, certainly like three strikes are out. That's not even happening. Agreed. I'll, I'll allow, some guys will be like, you flake, bro, fuck that bitch. Not, not, relax, <laughs> dude. You're not that cool. You're allowed one flake, but then he followed up or you followed up with him and look at you guys, happily married. Yep. Respect. So you do dating coaching. I do. What's the biggest problem you see in men? They simp. They simp. Yes. Simp for, they don't take the lead. Uh, they don't, they're not in their masculine energy. And I feel like a lot of women feel like they need to lead and then they're going to lead them right out the door. Lead so. them. Uh, did, you, did you just make up with that just now? Or is that something you've said before? <laughs> that, that's, that's one of mine. That's one of mine. Okay. <laughs> they lead and they lead them out the door. Yeah. Don't let the door hit you from the backside. Well, it's yes. great to have you guys on all the way from Spain. Bienvenidos a Miami. Gracias. Mis amigos, um, respect to you guys. Now let's meet the rest of our panel and we'll start the show. So my co-hostess for the day, hey. right? There's Nat out there. She's like this <laughs> fucking bitch. <laughs> Nat, my spot. I, I just threw that in there. Don't, Taking we love you, Nat. Your job is here for you when you get back. <laughs> Unless you can read. Because Nat can't read. You know, I can read. Oh, Nat! <laughs> just nah, kidding. Look out. No, I'm just so kidding. Sarah Elizabeth, she just, she's been, you were in Europe all summer doing something. You yeah. came back, you were here like a few weeks ago, a month yeah. ago. What's yeah. new? What's going on? I'm going to ask all the ladies the same question. Um, what do you do for work? What's your relationship status? Okay, nothing's really new. Ever since I got back, I've been very, like, to myself. All I've been doing is work and gym. I'm kind of over everything else. Um, I work in digital marketing. I do social media management, and I sell a digital marketing course that teaches you the basics of digital marketing. So it's, reach out to me if you're interested in learning digital marketing. Um, you're adulting. Yeah, I'm adulting. And you're just in the gym working, no man? No, no man yet. Okay. Mm. The guys sliding in the DMs a lot? No one worth my energy. Yep, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Well, as always, it's great to have you here. I, I joke with you that you're all real red pilled out, but <laughs> you know, girls got to learn. Mariana. Yes. Yes, Mariana de los Santos. She showed That's up to me. our other building. Yeah. She's like, hey, I'll be on your show. I'm like, hey, you're at the wrong building. We have a building a mile away. So yeah. other than being really bad at directions or yeah. our team giving you the wrong address, <laughs> what's your story? What do you do for work and uh, your relationship status? So I'm um, a professional makeup artist. I love to help women feel confident, beautiful, empowered, and I love to do that through the power of my beauty services. So professional hairstyling and makeup. I do makeup classes. I mentor new artists on the aspect of artistry and business and um, content creator as well and everything else that it takes to run a business. Nice. <laughs> and gym and my dog and yeah, that's my So life, you got the basically. gym, you got the dog, you got the business. What about a man? Oh, no. No I'm man. Single. Not okay. yet. Would you, if you did, it's actually a really important question. Oh my. You did get a man, okay? Yeah. Who comes first? Your man or your dog? Oh my, my dog. Oh. My dog. She's never going to hold down a man. <laughs> Kelly, can we have them? I would choose my dog too. So you would choose your dog? Absolutely. Let me tell you something. I get judged a lot. I have two cats. I got them with an X. Don't judge me. I love my cats. Like people are like, oh, bro, like cats, what? They meet my cats. They're like, yo, you got the coolest cats ever. Like they're the coolest cats in town. Uh, if and when I have a, find a wife and all that, fuck my cats. Because it's all about my wife. 
Okay? okay. So I feel like you women, you're like, I love my dog. I love, you know, Fluffy. He's the best. Yeah? Is he paying your bills? Is he taking you out on dates? I don't think so. I don't know. This might be controversial. There's going to be people out there being like, Adam hates dogs. No, I love animals. I'm just going to put my wife above my dog or my cat. What if Why do women put okay. their animal above a human companion? But well, I, I, are y'all just um, saying that because you're single and you don't have a man? Right. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta. Sh- if in case your cat dogs are watching, you gotta give them love. What if? <laughs> yeah, what if? Fluffy's like, I'll kill awesome. you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what if your future <laughs> wife was like, I hate cats. You have to get rid of your cats. I mean, I'm not gonna get rid of my cats. Like if she's like, I'm allergic to cats. I'm like, here's some fucking allergy medicine, girl. Get upstairs. You know, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Has it been a problem right now? Ram. <laughs> anyway, I feel like this is a common theme amongst women. I'm not, I'm not going Wait. ham at you. A lot of women have dogs. Right. But what I would hate to see, how old are you? 30. Okay, you didn't think about that for a second or what? You're, I almost lied, yeah. Okay, you're 30. <laughs> what I would hate to see is you, beautiful girl, makeup artist, single, 42 dogs. How would you feel about that? No, that's not gonna happen. Exactly, because you just got G-checked and you're realizing maybe I need to put <laughs> but, the potential man of my dreams above Fluffy the dog. I mean, absolutely. When he gets to like meet me and be in my life. But I just, I don't see how it relates. Like my dog has its place and then we come together. Like you want to date me, you need to accept my dog and allow him to be part of our lives in a way. Yeah, nobody's saying that he can't accept your dog. Well, but that's what I meant then. Okay. I don't know, like, I feel like it's just different. I don't think it's just like a levels thing. It's like someone comes above the other one. No, I'm telling you, the human comes above the animal. That's what I'm saying. Dogs are like kids, though. Right. No, they're not like kids. They, 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 this is they my are. point, guys. They did not come out of your vagina unless you're into some weird shit. You adopted them from the shelter. They're cute. They're amazing. You have to clean up their poop. Like, if aliens were looking, they're like, who's the boss here? Because I'm cleaning up after you. Whatever. I'm just saying, ladies, I see all too often. So you're 30. Okay, I'm 42. You're 33. So with age, sometimes, sometimes comes wisdom. I know a lot of women my age, 36, 40, 42, have dogs. No (laughs) ma'am. And you know what I say about that? No ma'am. So (laughs) what I'm saying is humans over animals. I'm sorry. (laughs) PETA, relax. Okay. (laughs) Sorry, let's start. Let's keep going on. By the way, cut that up for a short clip. Um, Keep going on. So is your name Liv? Liv. Yeah. Liv. Margray. Margray. You guys actually spelled it wrong. Yeah. Well, the people that are doing the spelling, <laughs> they might not be here the... much longer. We'll see. <laughs> How do you spell your correct last name? Um, you guys just forgot an R. M-A-R-G-R. Well, you have a very unique last name. I know, it's M-A-R-G-R-E. Margray. Margray. What is that? Um, it's actually made up, not by me, but my dad changed his last name to that. Okay, so now you're getting mad that we misspelled a made-up name? <laughs> We're living in fantasy land over here. It's not my fault. I was born with okay, it. Okay, but we spelled your first name right. Yes. Liv. I mean, you ever it's been pretty to, easy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You ever <laughs> been to the club Liv in Miami? I have. What happens when you like show your ID and you're like, I own this motherfucker. Right <laughs> I own it. Yeah, so you're, you're known as the girl with the gap. Yeah. You're very pretty. Thank you. And you're owning the gap. Yes. You're like the female Michael Strahan. Yeah, that's what they say, I guess. That's right. right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're sacking quarterbacks, you're sacking dudes out always, there? Always, always. All right, so what do you do for work and what's your relationship status? So I have a cosmetics company and a media company. I do like podcast interviews. Um, I model, content creation, and I'm single. Okay. I put that as jack of all trades. Yeah, basically. Okay. <laughs> how old are you? 22. Oh, you're adorable. So uh, you want to know how I made my money? not being a jack of all trades. Mm. I actually advocate young people being a jack of all trades in your 20s. In my 20s, I was a nightlife promoter, I was a stand-up comedian, I did hospitality, I did real estate, I tried to be a sports agent, I was a teacher, I was doing all these fucking random jobs, zero money. Great times, laughs, met a lot of people, broke as fuck. And then I had to go become I had to move out of Miami to Boca, which is like an hour north of Miami, 
And they're just completely focused on financial sales. And been doing that for 17 years. I still run a financial firm when I'm not doing this whole little operation. But by, I became a specialist at that, like the best in the country, the best in the world, our firm, this one particular financial product. And then you become financially free. We've made millions. We're good. And now I can do whatever the fuck ever I want because I don't have to work for the man. So you're 22. You've got time. Just if I see you again at 25, 27, don't be like, I do podcasts and modeling and this. It's like, you random, girl. So become a specialist at something. Well, I mean, my Or just be a great wife. That might be the oh. best specialty. Get, get your ass wifed up and be like okay. Juliana over here. You know? I mean, well, basically, my media company has all the, like, interview stuff under it. It's not exactly me having a bunch of different ones. You know what I mean? No, I don't. I don't know what you mean. But what I'm saying is we're about to find out. Okay. And you have no man? No. How long have you been in Miami? Um, well, I, I was born in Florida. Okay. So that means you're, you were born nowhere near Miami. I, I guarantee you. Palm Beach. I know it. I already know. Whenever, whenever sure. someone says, yeah, I'm from Florida, it's like, you ain't from Miami. You're no, from no, no, no. I'm not Stewart. from Miami. You're from... <laughs> Palm Beach. I mean, it's not that far. No, I know Palm Beach. Like Mar-a-Lago Palm Beach or like West Palm Beach near like Rachel's? Oh, um, like Boynton Beach? <laughs> so you're Boynton Beach. Palm My Beach. mom lives in Boynton Palm Beach. Palm Beach County I know, is Boynton Beach. I know where you're at. I know where you're at. <laughs> Basically, she's not Miami. No, I'm not from, I'm not no, from Miami. I know. I know. I'm, I'm looking at our friend over here with the dog. Oh, me? You're from Miami. You forgot my name? Yeah, no, I know. I, I, it's, <laughs> I, I, I was going to say De Los Santos. Mariana, Mariana De Los Santos. No, you say Mariana. Yeah, Mariana. I am from Miami. I can tell. Want to know why? How? Because yeah. you say, I'm from Miami. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Done. She's like, I'm from Miami. No. You're from <laughs> I didn't say I was from Miami. I know. I already, <laughs> I already got you read, Liv. Okay. Okay. But let's, uh, Margret, let's spell your name right. Okay, moving right along. <laughs> Aspen's back. Hi. Hi, Aspen. How are you? How are you? You're so sweet. You're so feminine. <laughs> But then I see you killing it in the gym. Oh, absolutely. I'm Do you lift more than men? Most. Yeah, I see? Mean, wow. If they're not going to lead, they can lead themselves out the door. Right, Julia? Yes. Yeah. yeah Aspen, you're from Iowa, I want to say. From Iowa, Midwest girly. You're a Midwest girl, Midwestern mm -hmm. values. How long have you been in Florida? Two years. Two years. What's the biggest difference between the Midwest and Miami? There's a lot. There's a I huge know. difference. What's the biggest thing? Mm, the family Other values. than everyone speaks Spanish here. Well, yeah, that's true. But the family values. Really? Mm -hmm. What is what's kind of family values? I don't know different? if I should say family, maybe friends, but I feel like it was really hard for me to find good friends out here. Yeah. I do. I have Sarah. I love her to death. But other than that, it's really hard to Sarah's find. Sarah's mom, friends. relax, bro. She's well, my co-host. <laughs> I'll fight you. How'd you guys it. meet? Uh <laughs> we met through a mutual friend. <laughs> yeah, we met through a mutual okay. friend. Yeah, and then ever and since that relationship we status? Taken. Taken. I'm taken. All right. Like Liam Neeson. Absolutely. Congrats. Uh, yes. How long has that been? Very recently. Nice. Because the last time you were here, you were single. Yeah. Shit just went down in the DM real quick <laughs> a month ago. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and last but not least, Tatiana's here. Hi. She allegedly does real estate. Yeah, and nightlife. So I'm in that transition phase, which is so typical of Miami. Yeah, every girl's a bottle waitress exactly. one day, and then she's a real That's estate why it's like, agent, sometimes I want to say why do real estate, because then this is what happens. And then she's a mortgage happens. broker. Yeah. So is your focus nightlife, and are you... Are you well, you, nightlife pays the bills, but real estate is, you know... So a dude doesn't pay the bills, the nightlife pays the bills. Yeah, I have to pay the bills, but Shit. it's okay. Okay, got it. And... Um, Relationship status? Single, but I have been dating, which is nice. Okay. Mm. Well, congratulations. Oh, thank um, you. <laughs> anyway, it's great to have everybody here. Uh, a lot of people are like, dude, why does the intro take so long? I don't know. It's something it's like the best part. I want to know who these people are. So bear with us. We're about to start the show right now. But it's great to have everybody here, especially David um, and Julia, you know, his lovely wife. And last but not least, we got Malik. Hey, what's up? What's up? Hey, I'm doing the super chats today, so run it up in the super chats. We want to get some juicy stuff today, so yeah, get in there. Run it up means give them super chats. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's my guy. That's the uh, ebony to my ivory. That's the Malik, the freak, seven days a week, freak a leak, like Petey Pablo <laughs> out there. So he's gonna be running the show out here today again. Natalia, for all of, for all of us, everybody wave at Natalia and say we love you. And we're thinking, go ahead, wait. I love you, Natalia. Hi, Natalia. Okay. <laughs> Natalia. Miss you. Um, we miss you. She's usually right here. She's uh, not feeling her best. 
but hopefully she'll be back for Thursday. All right, let's start the show. If this is your first time being here, give us a like, give us a sub, and if you've been here for a while, welcome back to the Sauzcast. Enjoy the show. And by the way, everybody's uh, Bitly links are going to be below, especially How to Beast's YouTube channel. You're over a million at this point. 1.5. Hey, but who's counting, bro? After a million? Hmm. Respect to you, dude. <laughs> um, with that being said, let's start the show. So, this guy, Russell Brand. Does anybody Have not you know who he is? Gr- Sorry about that. <laughs> this guy, Russell Brand. Does anybody not know who that is? Okay, famous, A list, movie, mo- movie star, comedian, um, turned podcaster. Uh, he was made, uh, married to Katy Perry. Uh, 2010 to 2012, he's a known ladies' man, okay? He's out there, he's very wild, he's British, he's brash, he's all crazy, and he's most famous for um, a few movies, um, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Get Him to the Greek, he's also been in Despicable Me, Minions, and Trolls. Um, Speaking of trolls, some motherfuckers are trolling this guy pretty hard, specifically two news outlets, uh, in the UK, the Sunday Times and Channel 4, which is a UK media outlet. And People Magazine, uh, over the weekend, came out with this story, and then the news just broke from there. So PBD, my CEO, was on his podcast a week ago. They were chatting up, having a great time, talking about all the cultural issues and the political issues of our day. I'm sitting in there watching. I'm like, oh, this guy's amazing. He knows what he's talking about. And then just because I've, I've seen these things happen, with certain other individuals we'll talk about. I was like, how are they gonna bring this guy down? Voila, show this story. So, Russell Brand accused of raping, sexually assaulting multiple women, including a 16-year-old girl. This is People Magazine. Punch in on that so people see the title. Thanks, Malik. So, there's Russell Brand. If you don't know who he is, um, he's got one of the biggest social media presence on YouTube in the world. So, here are some of the claims. of what's going on. By the way, Russell's channel has 6.6 million subs on YouTube. One point, that's, dude, you know how it is. 6.6 million, that is insane. That's a lot. So, Valuetainment, major media disruptor. We have 5 million on our main channel. PBD podcast, which I co host, we're at, I think, 1.5, I want to say. This channel is about a quarter million. And we have a few other channels that are growing. But the point that I'm getting at is we have all this stuff going on. Russell Brand just by himself is at 6.6 million. This ain't no lightweight. Like CBS, the actual media company that's been around for 100 years, has 6 million YouTube subs, just for perspective. He also has a big following on, I think it's Rumble, right? He has like a daily 1.4 million on Rumble. He got paid by Rumble. Um, We'll get into some of the claims. Malik, just so um, for context, would you have that video of his sort of his like uh, funny scenes from his movies? Yep. This is a scene, I believe, from Forgetting Sarah Marshall, where he played a funny sexual rock star, which he kind of is in real life. So he was sort of typecasted for the role. And this is the role that made him famous. You have that clip? So go for it. Volume? <laughs> Can I ask you a question? So okay. here's a clip of him coaching up a here, virgin who just got married on I don't know what I'm doing. how to you have sex. Do you not know how to use this? Oh, I know how. Have you had sex before? We do. Why? Our religion. All right, because of God and everything. Hey, listen, that's not going to be a problem because God should be present in the bedroom. Just tell me specifically what I need to do. You need to penetrate deeply and stimulate the clitoris simultaneously. That's what you've got to do. That's what it's about. If you can evolve the anus in that, that's absolute perfection. (laughs) By the way, I think you ladies will agree. Actually, great sexual advice. Yeah. Penetrate, (laughs) stimulation, pleasure, you know. Not bad advice, okay? But um, all good things must come to an end, especially for these types of men these days. So here are some of the claims. Uh, If you go back to that People magazine, actually, you don't need that. Claims, Russell Brand allegedly raped, sexually assaulted, emotionally abused four women, and one was 16. This was in the UK. We'll have that discussion. All four of the victims have chosen to keep their identity anonymous. Anonymous victims. Where have I seen that before, Andrew Tate? These allegations are from 2006 to 2013. 
Okay, so these allegations are 10 to 15 years old, and they're just popping up now? Well, okay. I, I also heard, I don't want to beat you to the yeah. punch, but I also heard that these women only came forward once they were specifically reached out to by, right. by the, the news, by the, these two it's media funny, outlets. when you go looking for situations, yeah. you'll go find some so situations. How, how come they were looking for those? No. Exactly, mm -hmm. and that's the conversation we're gonna have, David. So uh, his legal team, because obviously his legal team is getting involved here, he thinks there's quote unquote, a deeply concerning agenda to all this, namely the fact that he is an alternative media broadcaster competing with mainstream media. So you hit the nail on the head and we'll talk, we'll have a discussion of who else has come to his defense, but without even getting into what other people have said, let's just stay right here. David, what do you think is really going on here? I mean, I was, I was watching his, I think it's like a two minute response video he did. It's yeah, not a lot. which we're gonna play in a second. Should we play that first? Yeah, play that first. Okay, yeah. play his response um, to these allegations and then we'll have this discussion. You Awakening Wonders. Now, this isn't the usual type of video we make on this channel where 1. we critique, 5. attack, and undermine the news in all its corruption, because in this story, I am the news. I've received two extremely disturbing letters, or a letter and an email, one from a mainstream media TV company, one from a newspaper listing a litany of extremely egregious and aggressive attacks, as well as some pretty stupid stuff, like uh, my community festival should be stopped, that I shouldn't be able to attack mainstream media narratives on this channel. But amidst this litany of astonishing, rather baroque attacks, are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. These allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies, and as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then, almost too transparent, and I'm being transparent about it now as well. And to see that transparency metastasized into something criminal that I absolutely deny makes me question, is there another agenda at play? Particularly when we've seen coordinated media attacks before, like with Joe Rogan, where he dared to take a medicine that all right, so cool. He said, he said, we've seen coordinated media attacks before. He also said, I was very promiscuous in the past. What A-list Hollywood, good looking sex icon type guy isn't. Uh, but he's also been very transparent about it. Again, uh, he married Katy Perry, 2010 to 2012. So these allegations were, were from 2006 to 2013. So did it overlap with that? Who knows? By the way, you know, he's married now with two kids and one on the way. So he's married to Laura Brand, Russell Brand, that's his wife, married with two kids. His wife probably right now is like, look, I know who I married. This ain't no secret. Mm -hmm. What the fuck is this? Right. What's that conversation look like? So back to what you were saying, you saw his video. Um, what do you think is actually happening here, gut instinct? Yeah, I mean, obviously needless to say, if, if these are true, not a good thing. Maybe that doesn't need to be said, but I feel it does. But I think if there's ever gonna be like a perfect uh, storm very promiscuous, so opened up to opportunities of you know multiple women who probably were sexually intimate with him, who could perhaps make this stretch of these claims if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. He's now like resurfaced with a new popularity. He, I guess, he'd be considered controversial for like mainstream outlets, even though if you watch his videos, he's not like some alt right commentator or anything. He's pretty balanced. From what I've seen, he calls out the left and the right pretty equally. But that's kind of what we saw with Joe Rogan, who he mentioned in that video. Um, people who are maybe very level-headed who are starting to attract more and more uh, of an audience from people who are sick with mainstream media. And I guess maybe that's, that's the real kicker here, right? Similar to Rogan, he probably is taking away not just the views, but some of the, the power of the narrative that a yeah. lot of these are. Market share, credibility, oh. mm -hmm. and views, and eyeballs, no doubt. Yep. And you're absolutely right. This was a liberal, like Joe Rogan, who we'll talk about on the show, was a Bernie Sanders supporter. Yep. Mm -hmm. And this is so, not this is a political show, but I think there's a level of political stuff going on here, gamesmanship. Uh, Joe Rogan was a Bernie Sanders supporter. Um, but now he's the alt-right. Uh, Russell that, Brand was a, a British, uh, you know, bougie man. He was not a conservative whatsoever. He's a promiscuous man. Now he's the alt-right. Mm -hmm. So something happens when you start calling out bullshit. When you start calling out, yeah, I don't know about that COVID stuff. I don't know about all that. All that, you know, that whole thing. I don't know about all that. All that big pharma stuff. I don't know this globalism. Uh, what? It's not a left or right thing. It's just like, this is what I'm seeing and this is what I'm saying. But it's, we're living in a binary situation where it's like, are you a MAGA or are you a fucking liberal, woke liberal? Which one? Pick one. I'm like, I'm kind of neither, bro. I'm just me. 
And that's, I think, what's going on here. So let me ask the ladies. Yeah. You see something like this. And we'll, we'll have a whole full-on discussion about Believe All Women, Me Too, Harvey Weinstein. There are some scumbags out there. But gut instincts, what do you think about Russell Brand? Do you think he's guilty of these charges? I get it. It's you know innocent until proven guilty. Or is this just full-on a playbook of character assassination? What do you think? I don't know enough about Russell Brand to make an like accurate judgment about him. Um, but I mean, I feel like I, I don't know, but this happens common where mm -hmm. when someone starts to get a bigger spotlight, things get turned on them. Like the Tate situation we talked about a few weeks mm -hmm. ago, I think maybe it's something of that to like plot against him and decredit him. Also, women will ruin your life with false, false claims. Oh, will they? Yeah, there's terrible women out there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> unpack that. Unpack that. Uh, I don't know. I, you just you see you see women do shady shit all the time of making claims that with when celebrities they want, or even just regular dudes. Even just regular people that they know ah, have money. They have want. money. Yeah. Wow. Of course. Interesting. They want. They so want what something. kind of things have you seen? Not that you're gonna name names, but like what sort of. I mean, regular is, stuff have you seen out there? This is Miami. You see a lot. I mean, girls will claim false accusations all the time and I've had like a couple friends in the past that I've told like you need to really watch your verbiage when you're talking about things because you'll ruin someone's life not even understanding that you are like huh. you could be in a club and maybe a guy's trying to like grab you to dance with you and I had this one friend and she would always like say oh he assaulted me he assaulted me he assaulted me and she would always throw that term around and I'd be like you need to like what was the situation because you need to stop using yeah. that like verbiage was because it, in your opinion was he actually assaulting her or no, was he, he just wasn't. trying to, he was say trying to what's dance up? with her talk and say hi like so get, show me what he was doing to her like trying to like like grab like so grab it, is that her. considered assault no like I'm asking. grabbing her arm and saying like to get her attention and then just like talking to her like talking so Literally, just rolling up being like, hey what's up that's assault now and she in her mind claim yes like he assaulted me okay this so, is why men are so fucking worried to go talk to women these days. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, I'm just gonna come out and say this on the record right now, just before anything ever happens. Uh, I've been in the Miami nightlife business, dating scene, since I'm 16 years old, okay? I'm 42 now. Uh, clubs, women, nightlife, we're growing a major media company here. Up to this day, what is today? September 19th. 19th I have zero, zero accusations, zero drama in my life. No woman has ever accused me of shit because I treat women with respect. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit in the corner and be a wallflower and not talk to a girl. But here's my point. As we're building this mega media company, there might be a time where I'm dealing with the shit. Adam, he was in the green room with a girl. He said, are you ready for the show? It's like, this is sort of a narrative and this is what's going on. And that's why like, this leads, this credibility, this credibility issue I think is, is like kind of seeping. So uh, what you're saying that like you've seen girls use this language yeah, and when I've, it's just like, hey, yeah, what's up? I've heard of guys tell me, like guy friends too, tell me that they've got like situations where, where women have like threatened to say like, oh, you did this, this and this to me, like after they've taken a girl home or something to not, to like get what they want as like a threat. And Be specific. To me, that's, I mean, I've had, I know guys that have some like money that girls have threatened to throw like rape cases on them. I like interesting it, yeah i thought women were sugar and spice and everything nice they would never do anything like this aspen i see you nodding your head yes you I have a new boyfriend right now i do did he say hi to you in a club how did you guys meet and we met in person it was right after i got done running a race and i went downtown to drink and we met we met at a bar okay very hometown and of me got it so but when you I, see these uh, accusations of russell brand what comes to mind so what comes to mind i don't even think this really has to do with the women i think this has to do with an attack on russell brand i was watching a clip the other day and he was talking about covid the vaccines the big pharma brands and whenever you attack them they attack you even more interesting mm -hmm. say that one more time please <laughs> turn her up if you don't mind jorge go ahead I was watching a clip on Russell Brand the other day, and he was talking about uh, COVID, the vaccines, and the big pharma brands, and whenever you attack them, they attack you more. And I was also watching a clip on Andrew Tate, and he said that if they're ever going to attack you, 
it has to be with something that is like disgusting. So yeah. for it to be like a rape accusation, like no one's gonna let that bypass. Mm -hmm. it, if it was something smaller, like, oh, he stole or he embezzled money. Yeah, that'll just go under the rug. But since it's like a rape accusation, everyone's gonna pay attention to that. It's the go-to, it. it's the go-to. Mm -hmm. yeah. It the is, go -to. makes sense. No, I mean, I've had multiple conversations with Tate, like on air, off air, and that's exactly what he said. It's mm -hmm. like, they're not gonna just say, you know, tax evasion, if they're trying to get you. Yeah. Right. And we don't know what is true or not true with Russell Brand. I think we kind of know what's true, but that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to throw the most heinous, ridiculous human trafficking. Yeah. yeah. What? OK. Sexual misconduct. With a 16 year old. With a 16 yeah. year old. Yeah. This kind of stuff. Because, again, as always, he released information. Follow the money, guys. Mm -hmm. You're attacking big pharma. You're tackling a globalist world economic forum agenda, the matrix, what have you. It all comes down to money, mm -hmm. power, and control. Everything. Like the locks, the rap song, first you get the money, then you get the power, the respect. That's Scarface. Key to life, money, power, respect, key to life. Like that's Lil' Kim, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but it's true. So you're basically saying like, all right, I've seen some Russell Brand content. Mm -hmm. I think this is a huge attack on him. And that's what you think. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't You're nodding your head as well, Julie. Yes, I agree. I agree. You hit it on the nail on the head. <laughs> I also think it was interesting, uh, if you played a little bit more of his clip, he talked about how he had people close to him being reached out by the media and asking for, like, stories and stuff about him. So I just right there already shows that they were digging for something to use against him. And I wonder, too, if these women were paid off. I don't know. But I'm wondering, because they're all anonymous. Right. And that they're too. all like saying all these things, and but no one wants to like actually come forward. Yeah. Or they're made up, just like the anonymous witness with the Tate case that has no name and no face. Right. Sophie, her name allegedly. Sophie. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Liv, have you heard about any of this stuff? Is this your first time hearing this? Basically, yeah. Okay, cool. Even okay. better. So, but you knew who Russell Brand yeah. is, but you never heard of any of these stories. No. Okay. Feel free to agree, disagree, whatever. What comes to mind when you see when we're hearing this conversation? Um, I mean, I don't know enough. Like, I haven't seen proof or anything, so I really can't. Proof? Say. Who needs proof? Just throw out some allegations, ruin someone's career. <laughs> right. No, Who yeah, for proof? sure. Um, I think definitely like someone putting those allegations can ruin someone's life, and also it makes women that actually are dealing with real situations like not believed as well. Sometimes. Bingo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Aww. I think you're absolutely right. Like, at what point is this the little girl that cried wolf, the little yeah. boy that yeah. cried wolf? Because when the Me Too movement started, it was like, oh, shit, Harvey Weinstein is a scumbag. The Hollywood industry is a scumbag. Like, we're seeing that. Oh, my God, this person did that? That senator did this? This is crazy. What is happening right now? Mm -hmm. And women, believe all women, yeah. gained a lot of credibility. But then you start to see sort of cracks mm -hmm. in their stories. Obviously, we saw what happened with Amber Heard. Now she had to pay $8 million to uh, Johnny Depp defamation. She's accused of being a liar. You see that article out there uh, about Amber Heard? Mm -hmm. So I don't even know if these women were the people that even right. propagated this story. I think it was my opinion. My opinion could be wrong. It's someone pulling the strings, the matrix, whoever you want to call. So. What are your thoughts? Like, I think it's just so convenient that, you know, these people that are making these very serious allegations are allowed to be anonymous. Because it's like, at that point, I can make, I can say anything, but I'm anonymous. Like, you'd never know if I'm lying or not. And yeah, I agree. Probably uh, they got, he pissed somebody off, so they're going to mm -hmm. come for him. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be such a heinous allegation that it's like, you have to, like, pay attention to it, you know? But and I, it does minimize women's, you know, the people that actually go through stuff like that because it's like, it's such a slap in the face to them because it's like, you don't know if you should believe them or not because then it could be like, oh, you're just saying stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's just fucked all around. And what I think is, and I pre this is why I love getting women's perspective on here because if I sat around with a bunch of dudes, just full disclosure, if it was just me and the homies, Dave and Malik, whatever, we'd be like, you know, this is fucking bullshit, dog. <laughs> like, come on now. I mean, Russell Brand, like, he needs a rape girl. Come on now. Like, that's what the conversation would be. With the, obviously, the disclosure, if he did do it, you know, should pay the price. Mm -hmm. Like, we all know that. Nobody's condoning sexual misconduct, certainly mm -hmm. not rape, certainly not human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Nobody's Where's condoning that. Evidence, that. Yeah, like, and any decent guy that knows a guy that did that would be like, dude, you're a fucking piece of shit. Mm -hmm. I'll never hang out. Like, if any of your friends actually did this, like... No, that's just, I mean, it's, 
Exactly. If it actually happens, it's a very disgusting, weak thing, right? Exactly. Because you're taking advantage of someone physically less capable than you, right? It's disgusting. It's yeah. disgusting. Mm-hmm. Like, no genuine good dude would stand mm-hmm. for that. Mm-hmm. And your friend would G-check you. Your buddy would G-check you. It's, it's either, in my opinion, dude, I haven't done research on who's doing it. In my opinion, it's three things. It's weird, loner losers that can't get any. Mm-hmm. On the flip side, it's guys of absolute power you know that absolute power corrupts absolutely so like a guy like harvey weinstein who's disgusting or a a rupert murdoch not a rupert murdoch roger ailes sorry uh like these types of guys that use power to get sex from young women those two things Mm -hmm. i think right occasionally it's a drunk college dude who has no clue what's going on no doesn't know how to act with women not condoning that or if they were sexually abused that's or what now? Or if they were sexually abused, that's very common. I have what a master's is? in therapy. So okay. if someone was raping, the guy, like the guy himself was sexually uh-huh. abused, it's very common for them to then do it to somebody else. Okay, mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Good to know. But yeah. bottom line is, uh, I don't. Does anybody? Before we move on, does anyone here actually think opinion? Nobody. It's not a court of law. Think that. Russell Brand is actually guilty of these crimes. Anybody? I don't no, think so. No. It's like no? it's Russell someone, Brand. He can get any. Okay. Well, he, he can get anybody. Why would he have to yeah. go like force someone? You know what I mean? That's yeah. sort of my point. But that's all just right. my yeah. opinion. So, all right, next topic, which is sort of on this, but we'll go a little bit deeper. So, uh, you brought up Tate. We talked about Tate and calling mm-hmm. out Big Pharma. So, this whole conversation about character assassination, right, guys? How do you ruin? someone's life how do you ruin someone's career well back in the day you just assassinate them okay abraham lincoln jfk bobby kennedy whose brother his son is now running for president martin luther king gandhi like there's a track record for this but now everyone's got a phone there's cameras everywhere you can't just go out and whack somebody like it's the mafia in the 70s yeah. there's eyeballs everywhere so What's the next thing? We can't assassinate them, but we can assassinate their character. So Andrew Tate, that we've discussed, we had this exact same conversation. He said, well, first, they try to cancel you. Shut up, demonetize you, take your channel down, delete all your, when the first interview we did with Tate, it was in Spain. I said, what are the chances that there's like a WhatsApp group or a group text message and all these big tech monopoly guys are all on the same thing. And he's like, well, I'll tell you what happened to me and he'll let you be the judge. He said, well, first it was uh, Meta, Instagram took me down, then YouTube took me down, same day. And all of a sudden it was TikTok. Then all of a sudden it was, um, did I say Facebook? Snapchat. Then all of a sudden Uber, Lyft, Airbnb, Discord. Stripe uh, even, I Stripe, think, right? yeah. payment processors, mm. click of a button. So whether these guys are all on a group chat or not, I'll let you make the determination. But this thing is a coordinated effort. So he says, first they try to cancel you, okay? Then they try to throw you in jail. So this is exactly what happened with Tate. You got canceled, came back out, got bigger. What happens when you try to cancel somebody that the world wants to hear? They get bigger, it it gets amplified. They try to throw you in jail. Now, he's on house arrest because they're like, yo, we can't keep holding this guy with jail with no actual charges. Mm -hmm. They're all sort of trumped up. So we'll throw them on house arrest. But then the third one is the scariest. They just put a bullet in the back of your head. Or your plane crashes, like your Pergosian, right. uh, which uh, happened to Putin. Or you're a multi-millionaire billionaire and just feel like jumping out of a window of a hotel one day, right? Yeah. Or you went to go get tea from a coffee shop and there was poison in it. So this is the, there's, a, there's a playbook for this. So as Tate says, first they try to cancel you, then they try to throw you in jail, then they full on kill you. So this is, this is evidence of um, a character assassination. But you know, when you have trials, they have character uh, witnesses, uh, witnesses of character, right? So um, this is what I wanna get your guys' thoughts on. Here are the celebrities that are defending Russell Brand and these allegations. Elon Musk, Tucker Carlson, Alex Jones, Andrew and Tis- Tristan Tate. So depending on what side of the aisle you are on, you might be like, dude, those are the guys I, I would want by my side. Or you might be like, those scumbags are supporting you? This guy's guilty, right? So depending on where you're at. But here's what they each had to say, and then I'll let you guys be the judge. So Elon Musk said, 
after that video, we already saw the video, right, Dave, which David pointed out. I almost forgot to play that. Uh, Elon Musk said, of course, they just don't like competition. I support Russell Brand. The man is not evil. That's Elon Musk, the richest guy in the world. You have that quote? Yeah, punch in a little bit so we can all see a little bit. Um, so here's what he had to say. Then Tucker, if you scroll down, uh, Tucker Jones, Tucker Carlson, Tucker Jones, Alex Jones. Uh, he says, you can criticize, he says, this is what happens when you criticize the drug companies, question the war in Ukraine, you can be pretty sure that this is going to happen. So now you have the richest man in the world that's basically saying, of course, these people don't like competition. I support him. He's the richest man in the world. So he's got his support. Then you have literally the biggest media personality, arguably, on certainly uh, traditional media outlets, Tucker Carlson. Um, he says, criticize the drug companies, the war in Ukraine. You can be pretty sure this is going to happen. Check one, check two. Then you got Alex Jones, who's been on our podcast. Uh, that was how many months ago, Malik? Uh, about two, three. Two, three months ago. The night before, number one, I, I thought I would not like Alex Jones because I had this perception of Alex Jones because of the kind of the big lie that he told about Sandy Hook, which is not right. So he's kind of wrong. Even Joe Rogan joked about it when we were in Austin with him. He's like, you know, he's right on a lot of stuff. But he was kind of wrong on that one <laughs> big thing when he lied about Sandy Hook, if you guys aren't familiar with that. And he owes like literally a billion dollars. Uh, but we had the dinner lie? the night before. What's that? What was the lie? A shooting where kids were killed and there was oh, a whole controversy. Oh, he just lied that the whole thing happened? He was on a lot of alcohol and meds. That's wow. the sort of excuse. But here's what he had to say. Oh, by the way, cool ass dude. We had a steak dinner, great time at uh, uh, Trump Doral here in Miami. Do you have what he said, Malik? Let's play what Alex Jones had to say. I know Russell Brand personally. I know him back when he was married to Katy Perry. He's come on the show a few times. We've hung out some in Austin. I've never seen women throw themselves at anybody like with him. And, and I mean, I've seen the old footage of Elvis with women pulling their panties off, throwing them. It's like that, okay? At restaurants, at one of his events I went to, it was literally women jumping at us, okay? And he's a big guy in person. No one ever accused him for the last 15 years of assault if they say he's a big sweetheart. And now because he comes out against Big Pharma, he comes out against the globalist, he comes out against the New World Order, suddenly the allegations are happening to him. Gotcha. Now, you don't have to believe Alex Jones. You don't have to like Alex Jones. That's his opinion. But we can all agree, Russell Brand, good-looking, tall, movie actor, famous guy, big podcaster, you can see why women would throw themselves at him. Does anybody disagree with the, that genuine concept? Anyone? Mm -mm. We have no disagreement. Let the record show there's one, two, three, six beautiful women and two studs on a panel that basically say, yeah, something's fishy here. Got it. Um, Wait, a question. Sure. Are there any non, let's say, mainstream media backed people who have spoken against them or supported the claims against them? I don't know. That, that, I, I haven't heard any. Yeah, yeah neither have I. So, yeah. so we'll see. There's no character witnesses on the other side, is my point, aside from like actual new media. Oh, news they'll find a bunch of women. Like, you think this is going to stop at four? No. But not five like, women? They're like, going to find 10 women. They're, they're going to find like 20 women. independent people. But will they all be anonymous? They're all going to be anonymous. We know this because there's a playbook. Because they don't for this. exist. <laughs> Here's the playbook. Ready? Let's go to the next quote from the guy we just saw this happen to. Andrew Tate. David brings up a great point. Like, who's, talk, who's saying some shit? Play what Andrew Tate had to say. He says, uh, welcome to the club, uh, Russell Brand. Uh, Matrix attack. On my way to fight the crazy bitch allegations, if you scroll down a little bit. So that's what um, Tate had to say. So you said, you know women that basically hyperbolize what's actually happening, making stuff up, especially when they're rich, successful dudes and have money. Why not? There's a playbook for this. So um, speaking of money, let's see what Tristan Tate had to say. That's Andrew Tate's brother, who's in jail for pretty much just being Andrew Tate's brother. <laughs> Again? <laughs> like, no, like that's why they were locked up. Like he didn't do any of what they're saying. They're just like, oh, you're his brother? Ah, just go on in there, buddy. You didn't have to do anything. You just you live in the same house as him. So let's go, you exist.
It'd be like <laughs> Sarah doing some weird ass shit, and Aspen being like, "Yeah, I know her. That's my that's my best friend." Yeah, you two. Go yeah, on but on no there. one else I'd rather be. The old two up for with. one special. Here's what Tristan had to say. So, uh, punch in actresses reading stories by anonymous people. He allegedly attacked a decade ago. I wonder if there'll be money demanded. I'd bet my life on it. Again, mm -hmm. follow the money, right? So this is a show where finance meets romance. We talk about dating, we talk about money, we talk about pop culture. It's always a money thing or a power thing. That's what this is. Why do they not like these disruptors, whether it's Andrew Tate, Russell Brand, Alex Jones, Elon Musk, Richest man in the world who's basically uncanceling the canceled. Uh, because these, these, they're ruining certain people's bottom line. Mm -hmm. Right? Doesn't this playbook just kind of make sense? Doesn't something smell fishy here, David? Well, I mean, the, between the military industrial complex, which would be supporting the war in Ukraine, and then between Ooh. Pfizer and the other, you know, big pharma companies supporting the, you know, the endless boosters and whatnot, and Russell Brand being one of the main biggest voices questioning those yep. they probably yeah i mean that that would if i had to assume the storyline they reach out to uh you know their surrogates in the, in the media and then those people find some women that he was involved with oh so hey 16 if you put yourself in the shoes of these women yeah oh, you know 16 years ago we know maybe you had a, a, a fling or something with russell brand did maybe something inappropriate happen yeah. maybe a few of these dollar bills yeah here, here's yeah, 10 yeah. grand maybe something happened you, you can be you can be at a no, silhouette I don't think anything on the screen happened. here's 50 grand something happened right yeah i think i something <laughs> happened you, you, here's you 100 grand yeah you rate me <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Everyone has a price. Yeah. Bro, I got a price. You give me $10 million right now, I'm raping somebody here. It might be Malik. <laughs> Your voice is too obvious, though. Even, even with the silhouette, we know it's you. Exactly. But my point is, like, everybody has a price. And if you're some random bottle girl at some club from 15 years ago in London, and they're like, hey, you worked at this club. You used to hang out all the time. Do you remember seeing Russell Brand here all the time? Yeah, he used to come in all the time. Do you remember when he assaulted you? No? Here's 50 grand. You remember that? Yeah, there was this one time where, uh, you know, here's a hundred grand. Oh, this oh, I was one 16 time. years old. Yeah, then. by the way, exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's just wow. super weird. So, are you, so let's go to Liv for a second. I know you weren't familiar with this story, but now you're very clear about what's going on here. Okay. Poke some holes in my argument here. Poke some holes in my opinions. Say, like, Adam, but you didn't think about this. I challenge all you girls to be like, well, what about this? Like, I'm not saying I'm 100% right. I don't think anybody should say I'm 100% right because I wasn't in the club with Russell Brand. Mm -hmm. But tell me, Ed, but what about that, bro? What's up, what about this? Feel free. Let's have that conversation. Does anyone have any leaks or holes in this argument? I'll wait. I mean, there's definitely, like, two sides to every story. Like, it's definitely possible that he's being accused of things he didn't do or he could have, you know what I mean? Because um, even men that have a lot of money and are high value, like you said, like can do those things, even though they have a lot of women throwing themselves, because mm -hmm. maybe they feel like they can get every woman and maybe that one woman that doesn't want them or something like that, you know what I mean? So it's definitely possible. Yeah. Or there could be miscommunication where maybe um, like some men can be very pressuring and some women can call that, you know? Um, Why now? Husband. That would be my question. Why now, after yeah. 15 years, he well, yeah. has it married with two, two kids, one on the way, like, why now? But it's like, with the same with the Tate thing, right? There's things in his past that he's done, there's yes. old clips of him that are, these are not the allegations being brought against him now. These are yes. not the crimes he's being charged with. You can question, these are not very, like, moral or good things that he's said or done. And maybe, I'm sure Russell Brand, who's slept with a lot of women, maybe he did something here or there that was out of pocket, not exactly correct, but... That's not like that's not the fucking point about what's going down now. That's right. not why it's yeah. happening. So, Is there any actual like evidence at all? No, it's no. all it's all no. allegedly There's it's none. all anonymous. You bring up a really good point. Why now? Why now? But more importantly, why all at once? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like was all there like at a once, meeting? These four like, anonymous women all... decide to well, they went digging for at them. the same yeah. time just come out. Right. So clearly there's an investigation. Okay, guys, look. This is how it happens. Uh, whether you're big tech, big pharma, the media companies, uh, Ukraine, okay, the military industrial complex. This is how it happens. Guys, uh, this guy, Russell Brand, he's not helping us. He's hurting us. Would you agree? 
oh yeah, we don't like what he's saying. It's like, yeah, I don't like it either. And you know what? Our profits are down 12% this year. 12% is actually uh, $4.8 billion. Um, how much is it gonna cost to launch an investigation on this wacky British dude? Okay, uh, 100 grand, cool. Uh, yeah, go to our uh, petty change account, grab a couple hundred grand, go find some chicks. And by the way, when you make the allegations, uh, rape, that's what we're looking for. Human traffic, let's sprinkle that in a little bit. You know, the tax evasion stuff is so Jimmy Hoffa, nah, we're over that. Let's get real down and dirty with this guy. What's the likelihood a boardroom secret conversation like that actually happened? Very yeah. likely. Yeah. Hi. That's how it happens. But the problem, I think, also is women. Yeah. When you hear this, like as women, we feel like, oh, this is awful. Like we, would, you know, like you start thinking that when they they push something so hard that like women can't sit back and be like, wait, like this is terrible. Like we wouldn't want this to happen to anyone. So it starts to make you question. And then all the women that are hearing this are like, well, we wouldn't want to support someone that rapes 16 year olds. And so I think that that's the problem with an allegation like this. It's like so damaging because like women start to be like, no, like we have to believe that this could possibly be happening. I, I feel you, you know, you know what side I'm on? I'm on truth and justice side. I don't know any dude that's like, yeah, bro, he was a, he, uh, this happened? Nah, man, we gotta defend our men. Our men are out there. We just gotta defend all men, uh, all men. Could never, like guys don't think like that. We're like, uh, he's a scumbag, she's a liar, he did something wrong, he should be held accountable, that girl's probably credible. Like we, we decipher, we're not just like, well, she's a woman, I have to be on her side. That guy's a guy, I, I'm on team guy. It, it's, that's not how life works. But that's kind of where we're at right now. It's like, oh, a woman made a charge, we have to believe her. Like. I don't know. Do you guys not feel the pressure of being a woman when a woman makes an accusation to just coalesce around her argument? Is that not something that you feel, especially don't. during the Me Too movement? You guys no. saying that's I mean, not back pressure? Then, yeah, because I think much different now. But it's like even, yeah. even now it's like with this, it's like if you're a woman and you are questioning the woman's said, then like people look down on you. It's like, well, you're a woman. You're supposed to be about woman power. But it's like, no, like, well, what really happened? You know, and like, why is this happening now? Like, you have to question things and you have yes. to not care what people yeah. have, what opinion people have because you're questioning things. So Tatiana, let's stay yeah. right there and I appreciate that. You're saying now you're questioning things. Mm -hmm. But back in 2017, at the height of the Me Too movement, you just said, no, yeah, I, I believed her because she was a woman, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And why did you believe her just because she was a woman? Whoever well, I mean, she was. I was younger back then and I was living in California. And California well, we were very all younger back then. I know, but I was like living works. in California, so it's a very liberal state, so it's like, ah. you know what I mean? And then now that I'm like in Florida, like I see the other side and like I just think differently. So is it that you, with age came wisdom? Is because you actually hung out with people of different ideologies? You were exposed to new thoughts? Yeah, definitely. You've seen women lie. You've seen men lie. You've seen women yeah. do men I do. think it's a mix of all that, yeah. you know, environment. Sir, every time. What's up, J. Will? What's good? What's going on? My guy, Duke. Guys, you don't even know. They, you, people think <laughs> I'm insane right now. We just had a couple guys <laughs> just walk in the building. Uh, we'll play a little one-on-one -on -one afterwards, brother. We'll see what goes down. Wow. Um, you get no points. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Schultz got a couple points on you, though. Oh, God, he got one point. Uh, hey, but he only needed one. Yeah. <laughs> Did they? That's what our editors do. Well, welcome here. How you doing? Everyone say hi to PBD. For hey, the people at home. Hi. Um, Nick Harrison, by the way. Um, you guys know who that is? Yes. Okay. That's one of the greatest uh, college point guards of all time. But, you know. Let's so, carry on with the show. So you're going to play a one-on-one -on -one after. <laughs> yeah, we're going to play a little one-on-one. -on -one. Um, totally lost my train of thought. But we're, talking women, about, we're talking about the Me Too movement. Yes, but the yeah, Me Too yeah. movement. I think yeah. that, yes. that had more people buy into it and more credibility. Because that was also kind of like, and I know a lot of people don't like the term wokeness, but I feel like that was like first wave wokeness yeah, mm -hmm. when, when mm -hmm. people's uh, radars yeah. weren't up or our defenses weren't up a little bit more about should we believe everything, yes. right? But, and right. It, it's kind of like broke through. Yeah, this is awful. These things sound awful. Of course I'm going to believe it. Mm -hmm. I fully agree. And then, now we're starting to get desensitized yes. to a lot of yes. things. Everything's equilibrium. Everything, whether it's politically, whether it's sociology and everything, it's 
everything, uh, Candace Owens said this the other day, the everything kind of the pendulum swings and it's all about equilibrium and return to the center. Um, everything kind of goes back to the media. Men, understandably so, you know, with the patriarchy, men did kind of run society, whatever, but women also ha kind of had it pretty good, right? Like you didn't have these expectations of going out, make money, work, compete with men. Like women kind of had it easier, but mm -hmm. they didn't, I guess, have full, you know, autonomy to go make their best decisions, which I totally understand. I get yeah, Things were framed differently, right? Things yeah, were framed yeah, as it was yeah. more traditional, mm -hmm. traditional housewives in the 50s. And women said, I want to work. All right, great. I think women should work. But what happens is the pendulum has swung so far, right? Where it's like, believe all women. Women can do no wrong. If you're a man, you're a piece of shit. Uh, Candace Owens, which we'll play in a second, she actually highlights this. So back to one other thing. Uh, who said that, um, you know, it's because he's speaking out against what, oh, that was you. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, you know, these guys, the Andrew Tates of the world, um, the Russell Brands of the world, there's other guys out there that get a lot of women. Okay. Here are a few. Dan Bilzerian. Why don't you ever hear things about Dan Bilzerian? Leonardo DiCaprio. I hung out with Leonardo DiCaprio with my boy David Silverman and like 50 models one night. Because they're not talking out again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. say that one more time, yeah. please. Because they're not talking out again. I didn't hear you. Can you say that one more loud? <laughs> they're not talking out again. Oh, very Everything. interesting. You don't think Dan Bilzerian, yeah. they can find a couple stories about that guy? Oh, 100%. Doing some That's weird ass shit with chicks? Well, when you, you don't think Leo hanging out with uh, girls only but 25 they, and under? They stay in their lane. Like, they, they don't like speak out. Yeah. They don't speak out. When you start to speak out, you have a target on your back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like... There is, I don't know if you listen to Andy Frisella at all, but yes. like, I know he's one person that's gets can like it's on the downfall and I wouldn't be surprised if something like this came out against him super soon. Why because, him? Why him? Yeah. Oh my God. Cause he rips like the left ideologies, all the woke stuff out of like rips it apart. All the COVID nonsense. Like, I don't know if you listen to his podcast, but I recommend it's a good okay. listen. Um, and he talks about current events and ever since his podcast, and his social media became more like current events focused. I know they demonetize his YouTube. They have him like shadow banned on social media. Um, and so basically we're sensing a theme here. Yeah. Speak up against what the narrative is, mm -hmm. whether it's the mainstream nar narrative or the people that are pushing a certain agenda, we will character assassinate you. Mm -hmm. It's happened. Yeah. yeah. Umpteen times. And this is just another one. That's why I think this one is, is so unique. This one is so unique because this is like them killing one of their own. Andrew Tate was never a Hollywood A-lister, okay? Alex Jones, who also got canceled, he was a fringe, crazy, cuckoo nut guy, okay? <laughs> Elon Musk was a rich guy, you know, in the, uh, you know, PayPal mafia, tech guy, but those tech bro. Those also weren't rape allegations, right? Because you Rogan, you also have, but that was more like ivermectin or something. It wasn't like, correct. it wasn't like the, the really ugly But Tate stuff. was. Yes, no, Tate was. Yes, That's yes, correct. Yes. Rogan was a whole other situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the point is the media is attacking these people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a playbook here. Speak at, Rogan was against COVID type stuff. Mm -hmm. Alex Jones was against globalist type stuff. Tate was against feminism and uh, the, you know, the Me Too movement and you know, ro traditional roles. But the, the reason that I think that, that the um, Russell Brand is so interesting is because none of those guys were in the cool club, mm -hmm. okay? In the Hollywood parties, mm -hmm. in the movies, like hanging out with all the A-listers, mm -hmm. but now he's the guy mm -hmm. that's exposing those people. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a whistleblower almost. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're like, bro, you were one of us. Like what happened? Like you know, you were just sit. You got the Hollywood money. Yeah, yeah just yeah. like just shut yeah. the fuck up, bro. Yeah. Stay in the movies. Don't talk about the jabs and the COVIDs and the big pharma's and the war in Ukraine. Yeah. Just just go with the narrative and make your million. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Be like Leo. Be like Dan Bilzerian. Just like make your money, bank chicks, and we're not gonna attack you. No, I can't do that, mate. I got principles, <laughs> mate. I'm all about the truth. I love freedom. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm about that life. It's a really good impression. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> this is you know, heavy is the, the head that wears the crown. It's just so obvious, man. I wonder how many people like if you if you polled not us, but if you polled, some random demographic. I wonder how many people believe it. 
Yeah. Because it seems so obvious. That's my it point. It seems so yeah, obvious yeah, yeah, to yeah. people that, like, think for themselves, mm -hmm. I think. Exactly. But if you really follow that, like, and I know you said how people don't like the word woke, but if you follow that more, like, woke agenda, those people are typically known to not really think for themselves and believe, yeah. like, everything that goes blasted the in the media. So exactly. to people that actually, like, think logically, it makes sense. But So I want to do one more thing. Um, before we move on to a little bit more feminine type issues, the, I know where this whole thing is sort of me too. Uh, but I want to play some clips from Candace Owens. I want to give you some other clips about what other women have done. But we talked about the allegations and the heinous allegations uh, of him. And then I think it was you. There was like, especially a 16 year old, right? I mean, a six, are you fucking kidding me? So I took the time to say, what is the actual age of consent in certain countries? Mm -hmm. And you'd be shocked with what I found. Let's actually start with America, because I didn't know any of this. And believe me, it's not like I'm going to start hanging out at high schools now. <laughs> um, take a guess what the age of consent is I think it's in America. 17. You is say 17? Yeah, is it so. federal or is it state? Great point. Uh. Is it federal? I'm asking you guys. What do you oh. think? I'm not. I'm going to. You, you guys are the students. I'm the. I'm the teacher. Take the yeah. test. What's the age of consent in America? I think it's state by state, probably 16 to 18. Okay. Yeah. Ladies? I think, I think it's like, 18. I think it's like 18? 16 yeah. to 18. 16. Okay. With parental. Uh, I'm not sure. I would All say right. 15. So I thought it was just <laughs> 18. Underage. I thought it was <laughs> full on just 18. That's what it is. Like, if you're <laughs> under 18, like, don't go near that girl. Straight up. We had John Zerka on the show here, though. He's like, I love teenagers. I was like, Zerka, no, hey, you're fucking insane, dog. But just make sure they're 18 plus. One girl goes, 19 plus, just to be sure. He's like, hell no. Oh so I did some research. And actually, David, you're absolutely right. Go to this map of the United States. It's actually in 34 states, which are the green, punch him, Malik. Um, wow. 34 states, which are in green, yep. oh my God. are 16. Wow. I, wow. I mean, you, need, you can be 16 and hook up with a, a full-on adult, and that is legal, okay? Wow. That makes me question the adult, though. I fully agree. Like, <laughs> yeah. if, some, if some dude rolls in with a 16-year-old, he's like, dog, it's legal here in Kentucky. I'm like, you're still a scumbag. I mean, if you like <laughs> might be a legal scumbag. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, in, True. in, I think like what's, one, yeah. two, three, in New York, Texas, and a handful of other states, Illinois, mm -hmm. um, Colorado, it looks like 17 is the magic number 17. So if I was at a club in New York, which I'm at all the time, and my buddy brought a 17 year old girl, I would instinctually be like, what the fuck are you doing guy? Well, like she, what? She, she shouldn't be in the club though, but I, Totally agree, yeah. but yeah, he's also not being a 17 year old. <laughs> but people are breaking rules left and right is my point. So he's like, dog, she's 17, bro. Like, it's all good. She just graduated high school. I'm like, yeah. I'm not saying my friend did that. I'm just saying I would be weirded out, but I found this information. And then there's other states, go to the states, because I'm born and raised in Florida, 18. which is a, the red state. It's 18. Weren't you in the club at 16? I was in the Did club at 15, like dog. <laughs> like, I was using fake IDs. I've been in the club way too long. So to, to think that 15s and 16-year-olds and 17-year-olds and 18-year-olds are not in clubs, you'd be naive. So yes. Crazy. Now, a 15-year-old boy is going to have a lot harder of a time getting in a club than a 15-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. Like, they can get all done up. I'm like, pimple face. I'm like, I'm in the club. Like, get the fuck out of here, loser. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's mission Impossible, yeah. For mission us. Impossible. Yeah, yeah. You got fake ID. It's not going to happen. You have no money. You just lose the fake ID. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> a girl, a group of hot girls, I don't care if you're 19, 21, 25, 30, I don't care. You show up hot enough, some dude's going to buy you drinks. Mm -hmm. Me and my boys don't roll up to the club and be like, all right, guys, look good tonight, smell good tonight, because <laughs> girls are buying us drinks tonight. <laughs> Never going to happen. Malik, you remember we tried that? How many drinks did we get? One. We did. That oh, one girl yeah. bought me a drink. <laughs> but it wasn't even in unintentional. I think she was just hollering. Yeah, you just raised her up. I just raised her up. She said, I'm going to buy you a drink. I go, I'll buy you a drink. She goes, I'm buying you a drink. I was like, you just got rizzed up. <laughs> Can I ask, Stacy? What's, what's the like, appropriate age gap? I have this conversation all the time. What's the appropriate age gap yeah. between who? Someone that's 18. Oh, I don't know. Zero. Like, I don't know. <laughs> nothing. Well, 
Um, you're saying if a girl's 18, yeah. how, what's the oldest the guy could be? Mm -hmm. 26. Eh, but it's still... Uh, yeah. Or like the yeah. 16, well, it's like I, early I, 20s, I, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I operate just to yeah. even talk to you, you're 21 plus. Like, you can't even legally drink alcohol, like, yeah. call me when you grow up. But there <laughs> is a rule or a guideline of the man's age, half his age plus seven. So if you're a 40 year old man, half your age is 20 plus seven, 27. That's an ideal target. So if you're 30, half your age is 15 plus seven, 22. Now mm -hmm. the average relationship marriage in the United States, I wanna say is three years. The, the age gap, the age difference. Mm -hmm. By the way, around the world, around the world, in no country is a woman older than a man when it comes to marriage. Men are always older than women. Fact check me. There's not one country in the world where men are going after older women. Now there might be some young dudes watching cougar porn out there, milk porn out there, but that's an anomaly. That's not who they're marrying. What do you think the right age gap is? I think like five, six years would be, I would, I would. How old are you? I'm 23. You're 23. The most I would do. Would you do date a 30 year old? I have. I think the most so I would do. You already have. Do, so you already well, broke yes. the rule. That's seven years. So the most I would do would be like up to 10, but still like. So you just went from six to 10 <laughs> in a sentence. Well, because realistically, that's what I'm looking for now. Okay. Well, yes. So here's what I tell, tell women. It doesn't matter. Like, this is my number. You're mm -hmm. going to meet some dude one day. You just met some dude. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to say, how old are you? You're just, you're a grown up. He's a grown up. And you guys are going to vibe. You're going to hit it off. He's tall. He's good looking. He's got money. He takes you out. And you're going to be like, I actually like this guy. Mm -hmm. And then you find out he's 34. And you're like, I don't really give a shit. Because women will break their rules for guys that are worthy of breaking their rule for. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anytime a girl is like, yeah, this is my rule. It's like, okay, when Leonardo walks in here, he's almost 50. Go ahead right. and see how <laughs> close to well, you stick to your rule. Or ask the only him. reason I say that is because when I felt like I was with him, I don't feel like we had all that much to talk about. It was that just might mean me that too. he's boring. Yeah. Well, I can assure you, he was boring. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, he was boring. So it had nothing to do with his age. He was just a boring ass dude. He was boring. He had no yeah. riz. He had no charisma. He sucked. He didn't let her talk. And when he told stories, yes. they sucked. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. I know these types of people. <laughs> Why? You, they know, you know these types of people. I don't give that shit. It's six years difference, three years difference, ten years. David, come on. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, of course. If you can talk to someone, you can talk to someone. I, that yeah. being said, I would agree that maybe once you're past. 30, you probably want a girl that's at least 23 or 24 just because there's a, usually a high degree of immaturity mm -hmm. beneath that range. Fully agree. Yeah. Yeah. But I always yeah. say this, there's short term and there's, and there's long, long term. term. Yeah. So if you're solving for a long term. It's a different game. Yes, it's a different game. Yeah. You, know, you, know, you know what they say? It's like, you might not be Mr. Right, but you might be Mr. Right tonight kind of a thing. Like, <laughs> same thing works with women. Yeah. Uh, there's short-term fun, and then there's like long-term. Of course. Yeah. So it's what are you solving yeah. for? So that, that blew my mind about age of consent in the United States. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, all right, maybe the United States is just fucking weird. And they think that 16s and 17-year-olds is fair game. No, so what's my next number. conversation? The world. What let's the see world? what's going yeah. on in the world, David. <laughs> let's see what kind of beasts are out there, right? So let's see what's going on in the world, Malik. So punch in on this. is hard to see. But... Um, Malik, what does it say exactly? So it's, it's America, Europe, Africa, and Asia. So America is blue, uh, Europe is red, Africa is green, and China is blue. What are the ages China. that you see there, Malik? My eyes aren't what they used to be because, you know, I'm old now. Italy, 14. 14. 14 is Germany, Italy, China. There's a 13 in Argentina. I yeah, Argentina's 13. 13. Oh, somewhere is 21. <laughs> That's for homosexual sex in a certain oh. uh, China. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. So it does it heterosexual and homosexual? No, that's be yeah. What's yeah, the yeah, one it the, is. The yes. B in the bottom. Iraq is. So what's X, the youngest? Mean... What's the youngest that you see here, guys? Thirteen. Thirteen. And what country is that? Argentina. Argentina, Argentina okay. coming to first. That's Argentina. <laughs> Brazil. <laughs> like, yeah, you don't even like have you're a teenager your. Uh, now. What, you what, are the, what do the Latinas have when they're 15? They're quinceañera? quinceañera. You haven't yeah. even had your quinceañera yet. <laughs> right. And there's dudes hollering. You haven't even had your bat mitzvah yet in Israel out here. So, uh, what's the most common number that you see here, guys? 14, 14. right? 14. Most common around the world? Uh, 14, 15. 15. Yeah, 14, 15. Okay, so. Huh. 
I'm going to go on the record here. Ew. This is all about Russell Brand and these allegations. OK, you can take that down. Um, I think they're BS. I think we've already had a conversation that these are matrix attacks. And then they throw in the, oh, she was 16 thing. And you're like, what the fuck, 16, dog? And then you go look at this list, and it's like, yeah, actually, 16 is the age of consent in the UK. Right. And in 36 uh, states in America, apparently. apparently. So, sure. like, this whole conversation, if you don't know any better and you don't do your research, and you're the typical person in America, you're like, yeah, Russell Brand uh, uh, raped these women and one was 16. Scumbag, cancel him. But let's look into this a little bit deeper because there's a playbook for this. Rough stuff, guys. Is anybody mind kind of blown about? Uh, yeah. Yes. About this? Yeah, yeah. Fully agree. My mind was blown. 13? I was like, that's crazy. All right. So, <laughs> make sure that the woman A is consenting, <laughs> and that she's of consensual age. Interesting. Um, let's talk uh, about believing all women. Okay. So. Um, we had Candace Jones on the podcast. Candace, Candace Jones. Jones. No, I keep saying Alex Jones. Um, <laughs> we had Candace Owens. Let me say this again. So Candace Jones and I. No. <laughs> so we're going to have a conversation about believing all women. So we had Candace Owens on the podcast, not Candace Jones. I don't even know who the hell Candace Jones is. We can have her on next. We can have her on next. We had Candace Owens on the podcast. And we were talking about... Uh, Men, masculinity, feminism, toxic masculinity, you know, the feminist movement. We had that conversation. And I asked her, I was like, well, who's the face? We we're having a conversation about Trump. And then we had the conversation of like, well, who's the face of toxic masculinity these days or the face of masculinity? And she said, well, obviously Tate. And she just interviewed Tate. We had interviewed Tate. So we had that conversation about him. But then she started talking about the feminist movement. I think it starts at 126. So here's what Candace Owens, not Candace Jones, had to say about the feminist movement and basically what's been happening in America today. Shout out to PBD, because this was on his podcast, uh, what, Thursday? Last Thursday. Go ahead, play this. A response to 10 years of men being told that they are not shit from women, right? The Lena Dunham's, the girl culture, and Taylor Swift with 10, an army of 10 girls. Uh, every song's about a guy and why men suck. Who I mean, runs the world? A, girls. Who runs Beyonce. the world? Yeah. Beyonce. Yeah. Girls. The I mean, there has feminine. been a, te a decade, the future is feminine. Hillary Clinton, you know, men just shut mm -hmm. up, Me Too movement. A decade of men being told that they have no value. No value in this society, okay? It is inevitable because I believe in equilibrium, right? Because I believe that eventually the world has to correct itself, the energy has to correct itself. That there was going to be men that started saying, actually, mm -hmm. You do have value. <laughs> Actually, that woman has no value. Actually, women ain't shit, right? <laughs> you know, because she's a hooker, because she's a sex worker. And this is what we're seeing right now. And people that don't understand that is because you're, you're pretending that we haven't been existing under a matriarchy for actually longer than 10 years. I mean, it's been about 15 years of sustained trash talk to men that has just been circulated in the mainstream media. And the best part about it, which is just so brilliant, you gotta love women because we can be mocking value, is at the same time that we're doing this, we're claiming that we're the victims. Right? We're yeah. like, which we're one like, is it? It's like, and also like, me too, and time's up. And, <laughs> yeah. But like, we're completely dominating the narrative for the last 15 years. Um, and so I understand it, I get it. And I'm actually so happy that men are starting to talk about what it means to be a high value man and to bring in a high value woman, right? And so is Andrew Tate the perfect person who, uh, you know, that, really his past is, no, he's got a lot of things in his- 255? Yep. There it is, okay, cool. I so when right. you hear a woman like yeah. that, basically sort of clown the Me Too movement, clown the feminist movement, yeah. sort of clown uh, the boss babe narrative, and this is a beautiful, intelligent mother of three, well, two and about to give birth. Um, how do you feel about something like that? Is that, is that kind of weird to you? Is it kind of, uh, is she on point here? Mariana, what do you think? I agree with her. I feel that there's been a shift in like people realizing like there's just like a lot of women that have been in the masculine energy and now we're shifting towards like being more aware of how like we are supposed to be in our feminine and allow yourself to be in that flow and allow a man to be in their masculine and they're the ones that are supposed to have this energy so i completely agree with her and um i do believe that men have a lot of value to like provide for us and society and everything else what have you guys seen out there? Like you said, well, like the Me Too movement, everything you were, oh, that was you, and you were like, yeah, I believed everything. 
But now I'm kind of questioning everything. Yeah. So does this sort of validate what you're basically saying? Pretty much, yeah. And I think it's a really good thing to have a woman, you know, kind of go against it. Not go against it, but like question it because yeah. it, you know, sparks that thought in like other women who just always like, oh, it's me too. I should be like, like supporting it. So it's like it's because you have a woman saying like, okay, question it. Like why this or why that or you know what I mean? So it actually like allows, gives women that space to be like, okay, well, yeah, like let me question this. Let me question that. Kind of you know, hits different coming guy, from a woman, yeah, right? Yeah, it's one thing yeah. for a guy to be like, oh, no, me too. Like, then you're just going to be like, oh, that guy's an asshole. But when you have a woman talk that way, then it's like, okay, well, yeah, that's true. Like, what about this? What about that? So I think it's good to have a woman like her, you know, speak up on it. Liv, what are your thoughts? Um, I mean, I think women should definitely support women. But I think, you know, as humanity, like men and women need to all support each other, not be so like against each other. And I think that's yeah. kind of where we've been at is like against each other. Um, yeah, basically. So I, number one, I agree. Like this, this, you know, black versus white, yeah. Republican versus Democrat, men versus women, Christians versus Muslims, uh, Muslims versus Jews. Like it just, that's, that helps gets eyeballs. Mm -hmm. You know, the, we interviewed this guy called Rick Sanchez, who was one of the biggest uh, like media pundits in Miami for years, if you, if you remember him in Miami. And he used to have a phrase that he said on the show. He goes, if it bleeds, it leads. Like the leads, don't bury the lead. The lead story better bleed. Because what, you know, what are you gonna tune in for? Breaking news, uh, murder, robbery, kills. This is what's going on. You're like, shit. Breaking news, a firefighter saved a puppy from the, the right. kitten from a tree. It's like, nah, so if it bleeds, it leads. Yeah. So we're at each other's throat, not like, because we want to be at each other's throat. A lot of it is kind of the media mm -hmm. that's sort of pushing this agenda. So I fully agree. Like the part of this show is I get a lot of criticism for not dunking on women no more, right? Because certain yeah. shows will dunk on women. Mm -hmm. And it's all good. Some women full on deserve to be fucking... 360 windmill dunked on. And men too. But yeah. also men. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Like I get I get heat because I didn't defend certain men that were on this show. I'm like, mm -hmm. so now it's my job to defend every guy that comes on this show or dunk on every woman that comes on this show. That's just not how I operate. Yeah. I'll fucking dunk on your ass if I think you suck, <laughs> but I'll lift you up if I think you're dope. But that's my point is that it's not a man or woman thing. It's like, are you a credible real person thing? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You also said I also think that we that women should support women. Yeah. What does that mean exactly? Well, I feel like, you know, I don't know exactly her, but people are like, oh, women are in their like masculinity or, you know, want to be leaders. But why is that such a bad thing that women want to have dreams and passions and don't want to just like stay home and cook and clean? Like, I don't understand why that's such a problem to have dreams and want to pursue them and not have to depend on a man mm -hmm. all the time. I think having a relationship that you both bring value, of course, but I think like a woman just depending on a man like isn't good for her mental health either because then what if he cheats and she's not okay with that and then she ends up having to restart her life, which happens a lot of the time. Yeah, by the way, this is the most common argument I've heard on this show is I will never tell a woman, give up your hopes and dreams and just go be a housewife. Get yeah. your ass in the kitchen, bitch, like <laughs> zero, mm -hmm. okay? So you're never gonna hear that from me. Right? But at the same time, all right, at the same time, I also see women who are 40 plus, keep in mind, I ain't as young as you beautiful people, who are 40 plus, still working on their hopes and dreams and chasing that bag and getting their career and single and literally having babies with themselves and freezing their eggs. And like girls I've known who are, okay, you guys are all hot. The baddest chicks in high school. Hot as fuck. Guys were throwing at like themselves at them like crazy. I say this all the time here. And now I see them and they see me out with younger girls and they're like, what Adam? I'm like, what? It's like you're 40 now, Gina. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Damn, but what's that statistic? Why are you out in the club <laughs> still? What, but with your with what you're saying, what's that statistic that women are 40 and single and having babies with themselves? Like, is that, that's not really a majority? So, no, but there, it's Starting becoming the majority. What's my point? I don't know if anyone saw that me and Chelsea Handler went back and forth on the internet because I cited a statistic from 
Morgan Stanley, they did a report called the She Economy, not the Economy, the She Economy, and it was the premise of by 2030, which is in how many years? Somebody help me here. Seven, 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 seven years. So, like, not that far away, 45% of working women, so that's almost 50%, flip a coin, by 2030, 45%, ages 25 to 45, will be non-married, no kids, single. Okay, that is the first time in human history, in American history, that's ever been a fact, like a situation. So all I'm saying is, dude, girls, do you. Make your money. Live your life. Hopes and dreams. You shouldn't have to rely on a man. Yeah, there's the clip right there. Um, but what's the outcome? But I also think the problem is that what if a woman does want to stay home and, and cook and clean? I feel like the narrative now is that, that traditional values are not valued anymore. Yep. And that it's wrong for a woman to want to stay home and raise a family. You're just submitting mm -hmm. to the patriarchy. Yeah. Yes. And, right. and I'm not saying that women shouldn't go out and have a career. And if that's what they want, that's great. But the other opposite end is being pushed that that's a negative. That women want to stay home and cook and clean is a bad thing. But Julia, it's, it's such a great point right there. And I think more women need to say, hey, by the way, I actually don't want to go work every day for a random company and make mm -hmm. 60 grand a year or go to college mm -hmm. for the next decade mm -hmm. and, and do this career, I would yeah. much rather straight up use my youth and beauty and great personality to lock down a man and be the best housewife ever and be a mother and be genuinely happy. And you yeah. also have to know the value of what the man wants. Like I think a lot of mistakes women make is that if a woman wants a career that's awesome but you have to find a man that wants that too because some men want a traditional yeah. family and they want a woman to stay home and i think that you have to be okay with knowing that there's both ends and right you can have malik both. you have that right. second half of candace uh candace owens i almost said candace jones so <laughs> i think julia you bring up a great point okay i say this all the time women have the luxury of having options Men don't have that option. Like if David and I were like, you know what? We're two good looking dudes. Let's just go find some chick to take care of us. Let's just be house husbands. We'll chest feed the kids and just live our best life. Like, why don't we do this, David? Let's, let's, let's do all, it, bro. Let's go. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Yeah, let's, let's go do find it. some hot chicks that'll take care of us. You know how often that happens? Zero. Like the only times it does happen is it some weird ass situation? <laughs> yeah. Madonna's gonna right. take care of you because right. you're a 20 year old year old fuck boy and she's 70 and just look at reaction. There's been okay. a deep, but there's been like a decoup coupling between like reality and how we're biologically wired versus like what's what women are praised for and women should fully be able to pursue a career if they want, but no one's giving them the reality check of this study. Right. No one's saying okay, that's cool, get your career. But and now I started seeing it, it was Julia. Yeah. Like, I'm what four or five years older than you. I'm in my 30s. You're just turning 30. Um, she's starting to have friends who are in this exact spot. Who maybe they got out of a longer term relationship, yeah. or they're starting to get it to the point where like, oh, I would like to have babies with a guy in a few years. But now they're in there. This is multiple people we know. They're at 32, 33, and all the guys they're interested in aren't interested in them because no guy wants to start in a relationship with a girl who's 33 with the pressure that we have to have kids in the next like two oh, years. Oh, you better hurry up, bro. Yeah, yeah. so, so yeah. then they get, then they end up 40 and they end up 40 David, they don't, don't even have you. that choice. Thank you, and I say this all the time. Yeah. And they're like, well, what it's do you a care? Check. What do you care? Yeah. I'm 24, what do you care? I say this, yeah. the tw who are the 20s more important for? The women or the man? The woman. Well, the women? Look at yeah. it. Well, no, for to settle down. And yeah, why do you somebody. say the women? Well, because I think the mistake, you know, when if you're so fit, busy focusing on your career and not finding a good man, like you said, the same thing. I have had friends that are 33 and they're like, yeah, I want to settle down now. And it's like, well, no guy the wants that. Gone, but yeah. as a guy, mm -hmm. like, they can be in their 40s and settle down with a 25 year old. Like, mm -hmm. the, the age gap doesn't matter. 20s for men. are more important for a man to develop himself, mm -hmm. but the 20s are probably more important for a woman who wants that option okay. in her future to enter into the relationship that's going to get her there bingo when i say important meaning is like what what decade in that in that is more important for the rest of your life mm -hmm. okay because if girls don't capitalize on their youth and their and beauty in their 20s they could be 40 and single now you might you might say like well you just skipped over 30s bro i'll get back to that dude you're talking to a guy right here Wasted the fuck out of my early 20s. Dude, did nothing with my life. Partied, had fun, whatever, all good. I can assure you, zero problem in the money department. Ladies, zero. Men take time. 
Like I'm getting a little gray hair. I, I'm like, oh, I, the girl's like, I like your gray hair. Yeah. Dude, you know how often a guy goes to a girl, hey, I like your gray hair. Zero, nothing, yeah. never. Yeah. Maybe like grandma, it's like, oh, it looks so natural. But here's what also <laughs> happens when a girl gets in her mid to li- like mid thirties, because I'm like, dude, I, the last girl I dated, I want to put her shit on blast. She was 34. Okay. Awesome girl, hot as fuck, stubborn as a mule. I said, listen, are you 30 yet? No, I'm 26. Okay, I didn't think so. I'm just, I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm just saying. I said, listen, uh, you're 34. I was 40 at 41 at the time. I said, I've been in a lot of relationships. I've been engaged. Like, we obviously like each other. Like, like it's on like Donkey Kong, Chicha Chong. Like, it's happening. Like, we, you know when that feeling happens like you're dating a guy it's been two months Mm -hmm. I said look here's what needs to happen because she works in nightlife I said uh, I wake up when you go to bed and I'm cool with that to an extent I trust you I don't really care she works at a very popular club in Miami one that we might have a person on the show that uh, has been named after that (laughs) and I said here's what I'm thinking I said and obviously like you know the whole phrase of like if you submit, I'll commit kind of a thing, like mm-hmm. that whole thing. I said, how long do you want to work in this club for? She goes, dude, if I'm here another year, I'll kill myself. So I said, whether it's me or some other guy, like, you're 34. Like, you don't want to be all up in the club when you're 44, do mm-hmm. you? She said, I don't want to be in the club when I'm 35. So I said, something's got to change. So you're going to have to, whether it's with me or some other guy, Stop being so like, I'm a, bu-. like, she's like, I'm an alpha woman. I was like, nobody likes that shit. Yeah. Right. I don't give a shit how hot you are. Yeah. I don't want to hear you're an alpha woman, but she's been doing this, taking care of herself for so long. So set in her ways, so hot, so beautiful, but so thick headed. Because she's and probably said, never been with a man that knows how to lead. Exactly. Like, you know, but so you're the first person that, like, the, I feel exactly. like the mistake women make is, like, I was in a relationship before that I had to lead. I had to be the one that was, like, the masculine alpha woman until I met someone that could finally be like, no, you need to be in your place, your feminine energy, and learn to, you know, like, accept my, and, and you know I'm what not she as said? Yeah. You're absolutely right. She goes, well, for the right guy, I'll, I'll do that. I go, no, you won't. I think yeah, yeah. I think they like the thing with alpha women. It's like you're so alpha that you're only gonna attract beta men. So you're like, oh, for the right guy, like I'll submit. But it's like you're so alpha. No other alpha man, or, you know, maybe. If, but well, the alpha girls. It's not gonna coming, like yeah. come. They're, you're not gonna attract an alpha man mm-hmm. if you're an alpha woman. Well, if, you the, know? If, if the alpha woman's bringing their money and their confidence and their decision making to the table. A high value guy who has options, he's going to say, look, I want someone who compliments me. Yeah. I, I don't want to, to be dating another man or another person yeah. bringing these same to things compete. to the table. There's no, there's no harmony. Who's going to raise the kids? How is this going to work out? Yeah. Does that make any sense yeah. anymore? Yeah. I, I, I just want some peace and less gray hairs in my life, and you're doing <laughs> either for me. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. How, did, how, does, how does your guys' relationship work? In what like She's very feminine and lovely, but she also is working on a business. You're obviously a beast. So did you guys have a conversation like, listen, I'm going to lead here. You're going to be my, you know, I'll be the CEO. you be the COO. Like, <laughs> what does that conversation sound like? I would say it evolved uh, because when we first met and started dating, that was kind of around the time I'd quit the software job, was starting the YouTube. She saw the vision. She supported it. At that time, she just got her master's in therapy as we moved from Boston to Austin. She started working as a, a therapist at a school. At the time, having both incomes, it was a good thing. Yeah. Now, as the YouTube started to grow, we launched the clothing line. She's bitching about working. I said, okay. At this point <laughs> in time, it might make sense for you to come and work for me. And for, there was probably a period of th- three years as things were growing. She would kind of absorb tasks that were overflowing on my end. Then we'd hire an employee or an agency or something. They would absorb those. And then it got to a point where it's like, look, you don't need to really do any day-to-day duties now. Obviously, we're going to be having kids in not too many years. So what she does now, and it's, it's, it's still very important, helpful for the businesses, was one of our businesses is a, is a uh, men's mentorship focused on confidence and dating. Yeah. So the videos that she puts out and she films, that helps funnel more guys into that, uh, into mm-hmm. that program. Mm-hmm. But it's at a place, because we do have kids around the corner, that she can let that go and everything can still function on its own. There's no more like vital duties that, that depend on that. But it was, it was a transition as, I guess, I leveled up and build more financial uh, abundance and build more confidence in that, that she was able to relax a little by little into the more feminine energy. So I love this conversation because this goes back to what Liv talked about. 
well, I, you know, I want to make my money and I want to have dreams and I want to have goals and I don't want to have to rely on a man. But like, look at this beautiful girl over here who found her husband. She had hope. Oh, she had dreams. She I had can goals. I tell you all about it. I'm actually. But she's moving. she's at one point you kind of have to like take your hand off the wheel and be like, all right, I trust this guy. Okay, like, you know, what happens if this happens? What happens if it doesn't? What happens if we stay together the rest of our lives and build this business and build a build up a life together? You're like, I'm sure, like, what, what was going through your mind when you're like, I made money, but this guy, I don't know, if, do I believe in him? Do I not believe in him? But all right, cool, like. I mean, I, you have to at some point be like, this is your person and this is the person you're going to support and how is the best way you can support him. And for me, it was supporting him through his business, being home, making sure the house was clean, making sure he had food, just like making sure his life on a day-to-day -day basis was easier for him so he could work harder. Yeah. And I knew that that means he's going to be able to support me and we're going to live the life that we want because of how hard he works. Because his life is our life. Yes. And our exactly. life is my life. And it's just... It's, it's not it, like my money and then exactly. our money. It was, it was always... So I would say that you guys, your mentality, respect to you, it's a high value man and a high value woman. Now people, that's a question. We have that clip from uh, Candace where I asked her point blank. I said, look, I know what a high value man is. Like, I don't have any problem defining that. It's hard to define a I high said, value I said, what's a high woman? value yeah. woman though? This is her response. This is Candace Owens. It's the high value man, you said high value man, high value woman. I think it's very easy to define a high value man, a man who's protector, provider, present for his woman, respects people, physically fit on the outside, morally um, correct on the inside, obviously makes money, man of status, it's easy to define. That's not the problem. How would you define a high value woman though, especially these days? Is it beauty? Is it social following? Is it just being a mother? Like what's a high value woman? I think it is a woman that wants to be the CEO of the home. I think it is being aspirational. I think it is allowing men to lead. I genuinely believe that that is the dynamic that works. Like my husband leads in our household. You know, that is that is just the way that it works. You know, um, uh, I think it is being beautiful is an element of it that part of what the feminist rinsing tried to do was to, you know, the Lena Dunham's don't shave your armpits. That's the best part of the penis. It's disgusting. You know, like make yourself less attractive. You know, it's because men like attract. Okay, you're going to convince men to like ugly women if we just make ourselves ugly. It's like trying Never going to happen. Yeah, it's like you trying to make somebody say like eventually you're gonna make them love disgusting food but you know, you know of course people you should be attractive you should take care of yourself but it, that shouldn't be the number one focus on instagram trying to be sexy it's also being conservative a men like mystery so if you like this clip you want to watch another one click right here and if you want to great <laughs> Gotta love if you like that clip up. guys <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching out there but I when miss, you I hear... miss the older one the future is bright anyway right. exactly that too <laughs> so when you when you see someone like candace by the way she's one of the biggest what do you call it, social media icons, female out there, like she's a political, she's cultural, she's doing movies. She's also married, beautiful, young-ish, she's in her early 30s, mother of two, pregnant, she was pregnant right there. So when you hear her define a high value woman, what are your thoughts on that? Go ahead, ask me. Well, for me, I'm, I'm giving up the Miami life. I'm giving up chasing like the bigger career over a relationship, not that I'm, not going to work on my own career, but I would rather put my relationship and my man first because I want, I want a great life. Like the man that I'm with now, he's able to lead me and he, like, I want the family. I want the household that that's what I want most in life. I don't want the career. I don't want the Miami nightlife. Like I'm giving it all up. And was that an epiphany? Did you always know that yeah. it's because you have good values. You're the, from the Midwest. Um, I feel like it was always there, but it wasn't until I did meet the right person who led me in the right direction to where I was like, yeah, absolutely. I'm just going to follow him wherever he takes us. Now, God forbid, let's play Amazing. the live devil's advocate. God forbid something <laughs> happens. You break up. He cheats. All right, cool. Now you're 26, left stranded. What happens? Or God forbid you're 32. Like you put all your eggs in one basket. So for how me, do you grapple that as a woman? I mean, I can only speak from my personal experience. For me, I'm building my um, personal coaching online, so that's something I'm going to work on the side of my relationship always. So I always have that to fall back on if this doesn't work out, but that's not going to be my main focus. Like, I'm not going to let these come in the way of my relationship. I actually, I actually appreciate that, and this might be advice yeah. to the ladies out there. Does anybody here never want to get married, never have want to have kids? Ever. Anyone? Okay, so everyone here wants to get married, have kids someday. Yeah. Right? Because mm -hmm. if you want to go to Chelsea Handler, right, that's totally cool. <laughs> no, I'm, ge I'm generally being serious if that's what you want. Like, I have one buddy, the coolest, most awesome guy ever. He got uh, snipped. Before, What's it called? Before having kids. Before having kids. Oh. What? Uh, I yeah. swear to God. Of a second what? rate. Of a second what? rate. I'm just saying. He Those that. are reversible, though. Yeah, but he's not He's not 24. He's 44. Like, he made a decision he doesn't want kids. So he did that even without, like, accidental pregnancies. He had some accidents, okay, okay. I guess, younger. Yeah. And then he, so the point is, he made a decision. Yo, I'm done. 
But I don't know many dudes that do that. Yeah, I got snipped, dog. Like, like I'm, try- I'm out here trying to impregnate girls out here. You know, like, the, but the point is, the, I say that there's two very unhappy women, in my opinion. There's two types of very unhappy women. There's the first kind that sort of masks it, the Chelsea Handlers of the world, that are 50 years old. I'm single, and this is what I want out of life. I don't need kids. I've got a vibrator. Like, I don't need to uh, have a husband. Or I have a vibrator. I don't need kids. I can travel. I do drugs. I have Xanax. I can drink. It's like, that sounds like a me in college. Like, that's not grown up at all. Right? So I don't think that's a great lifestyle to have, especially when you're older and by yourself. That's not a cool thing. I also think on the flip side is I know a lot of, like, housewives who have no purpose. And statistically, these people, they're just like, they're, they, their whole life revolves around their husband, taking care of the kids, soccer moms, carpool, and they don't, and they just feel like, I lost myself. Do you know any women like this? Yeah. 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 Okay. I also think that's a detriment to women. I, I think that a woman, especially, let's, let's use Aspen as an example. Mm-hmm. So I would say, listen, I have an amazing situation. I have this guy. I live with him. He's paying my rent. I'm supporting him. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm in his world. I'm, I'm, I'm getting on board with what he's got going on. But while I'm saving all this money with no rent, no car payment, he pays for everything. That's kind of what these dudes kind of do. On the side, I'd like to start this coaching business, fitness mm-hmm. business. And you know what that dude's going to say? Go for it, babe. Like, start your, your, your thing, have your thing. Now, understand, like, I'm making hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in this. You're not making any money with this, so this comes first, but I advocate for you to do your thing. And I feel like a woman will find major purpose in that, and that's I think so that's lovely. important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Don't you agree? Yeah, I for think sure. it's super important for women to have like hobbies and things that they're good yeah. at. Like what I do, I'm completely online. So like say I end up in a good relationship, like I would be lucky enough, like her situation where I'm building something, like I don't have to go to an office, I don't have to go to a job, I can be anywhere and wherever but my family would be my like top priority. So if it came as to where like I couldn't balance that and all of the clients that I do have anymore, then like some clients would have to go respectfully because they're not my priority anymore. Mm-hmm. But I think having fulfillment is important or you're gonna be like lost and depressed. Yeah, and having that support system that's like there for you to like encourage you to grow and like allow you to have that safe space to also work on yourself and like do what you want to do in your life because we deserve to have that space too but it's I feel like it's just nice like that's my ideal goal to be able to have a balance of like being able to still have a purpose of something that like I'm passionate about and build that and then just have my family that's my main focus. Liv, you said you're how old? 22? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the biggest thing you've learned today? Because you probably don't have these conversations that often. I these do. Types, you do? Yeah. Okay. Well, on your podcast? Just all the time. I, I interview a lot of people. I do like street interviews. So gotcha. I learn a lot through gotcha. like different people. But um, I feel like, and you're, you're 23? Mm-hmm. Okay. Young women, I think, who need to hear this the most. And they don't need to hear it from fucking guys like David and I. Because they're, ah, you fuck you guy. Just kind of how like... When Candace Owens said, this is what I think a high value woman is, I think that women need to hear it from other women because it hits more, it hits harder. Mm-hmm. Don't you agree? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No? Absolutely. You don't yeah. seem sold. I see, uh, for myself, yeah. like when I was her age, like when I was 21, 22, 23, I was so like, I'm a boss bitch. I don't yeah. need a man. I don't want a man. I don't <laughs> want kids. I swore up and down. I never wanted a kid. I wanted my two sides so that. bad. I begged, I begged them to do it. They wouldn't do it because they swore, like, you'll change your mind. You'll begged who? Someone. Begged them to Gyne- do what? Gynecologist. I wanted my tooth tied. I didn't want kids when I was her age. At 21? I, yeah, when I was 22, <sighs> I begged. Wild. And I completely changed my mind, and I'm glad I did because, like, now, like, I've, like, a few months ago, I was on the phone with my dad, and I was like, I just, I want to find a husband. I want to find a guy. Like, I don't want to work. Like, I want to stay at home. And my dad was like, what, am I talking to my daughter? Like, who am I talking to? Because I've changed so much as I've gotten older. So, like, I feel like as you grow, you'll start to change. And I don't yeah. think you should ever give up on, like, your dreams and what you want. But there'll come a time where you meet the right person as you start to get older that, like, you'll find that balance of, like, 
what's really fulfillment to you. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been, like, in really long-term relationships. I know I'm, like, 22, but I've literally been in two long-term relationships so far. So, like, right now I'm kind of just, like, being single because I've been in long-term relationships from a young age. Mm -hmm. So right now is like the first time me being single. I do want a relationship, obviously, like eventually, but right now I'm just focused on like myself. Dude, all good. That's amazing. I, I, yeah. dude, I'm not that yeah. dude that's like, 21? Why aren't you married yet, random <laughs> lady? Kids. Who are your kids? No, I'm not, I'm not in that camp. <laughs> But I'm also in that camp that's like, you're 41? What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> but so, then you also see people like, like, for example, like my mom, she met my dad and like was housewife, depending on him, whatever. And then he ended up cheating. And then now she's single at 56. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so stuff like that happens too. Well, I look, I, I want to get to one more topic of the day with um, the rules of dating an A-lister. I'll just say this. I don't condone cheating. Yeah. Period. It doesn't make sense. Like, why would you make that commitment to cheat? And it's like, women cheat too. For okay. Sure. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. like, let's not be like, it's all mad. Oh, no, no. But, okay. I'm dealing with a family situation right now where there's a divorce going on and there's separation going on and the kids are going to different schools now mm -hmm. and there's a mommy's house and a daddy house. This is a very close family member of mine. And it all happened because someone cheated. Mm -hmm. And what I say is like, look, do I condone the cheating? Is this right? But are we really, especially if we have kids, ruining the whole family because daddy wanted to get a lap dance from a big titty stripper one night? <laughs> Is that really what we're doing here? Was it more than a lap dance, though? Whatever like... it was. <laughs> it was. But the point is, I get it. You're, we have no kids, we, whatever. Like, fuck you, bro. I don't trust you. But we out. But if there's kids involved and like mm -hmm. there's different now different families and all that, it's like, I'm not saying I condone cheating, but sometimes you got to let some shit slide. Mm -hmm. Now, what that shit is, is up to you. But I know there's a lot of women like, he cheated. That's it. Taking half a shit, removing the kid. Like that's it's like, it's like, is this really the game we're playing? So just pump the brakes a little bit is what I'm saying. So. For sure. That's all I'm saying. Don't break up the family. The kids come first. Wait. I don't know. Okay. I'm seeing a lot of nodding heads. We'll move on. Last story of the day. <laughs> Talk about all these guys. Let's live a little bit more positive, I guess. So I, I've been singing David's praises, you know, beast. Thank you. Because uh, I think he's a stud. Because I think he was, he went from, as they say, from like a simp to a pimp or from like geek to chic, right? From a zero to a hero, whatever. But I think that's a, what a lot of men need to become. I'm just, I'm kind of messing with you, but you get it. I appreciate it. No, I Thank you, brother. It. It's good, it's good. So, but when you do date these types of guys, how do women act? What's, what's your role in that relationship? You don't want to lose your sense of purpose. Now, let's say what happens when you're dating the A-listers of the world. Not just a good-looking, successful guy. I'm talking some of the biggest, famous names in the world. How do you act, right? So, that, you know, they say there's those rules to the game, but uh, when you date a Hollywood A-lister or a billionaire or whatever, like, you better read the fine print so you understand the rules. So here's a couple situations that are going on out there with certain relationships. You let me know how you would respond and how women should act, okay? So here's the first story. We'll go through them real fast. You know that Kanye's got a new wife. Her name is Bianca, okay? And she's being accused of being a pawn in his PR game. Malik, you got this picture? So reports have come out that he forces his wife to dress half naked to create buzz for his new music. And despite popular opinion or despite some of the narratives, um, she actually says she wants to please him and she's happy to do it. Here she's walking around with nothing but a pillow. Okay? That's what she's doing uh, in Italy, apparently. Then you have another relationship with Shia LaBeouf. Right? He dated this girl called... Twigs, or now it's his ex-girlfriend. Let's show that, that picture. That's her name? Twigs. They're serious right there. They met on a movie set, I think, for Honey Boy. She claims that during their relationship, she had to follow a tice lit a list of, wait for it, rules. Two of the many alleged rules included not speaking to her family and not speaking to oh. other men. Oh, I get yeah. one of the two. Uh, the men thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> talk to the family. Thanks for clarifying. Um, yeah. We all remember like a month ago, the biggest story in the Jonah world Hill. was Jonah Hill and yeah. his uh, surfer girlfriend where Jonah Hill, if you don't know, super bad, Wolf of Wall Street, like 
He's a dude. He made headlines for just setting boundaries in his relationship. And then here's the last one. Uh, Elon Musk, you know, he's been married multiple times. He has nine kids from three different baby mamas, but there was a first wedding and her name was Justine. And he, she claims that Elon Musk whispered in her ear that he was the alpha in the relationship on their first wedding dance. Okay, cool. That's hot. So that's hot? <laughs> yeah. He whispered in her ear yeah. saying like, I'm, oh, I'm the, the alpha. alpha. Oh, that's hot. I think okay. that's hot too. Yeah. On the wedding dance? I'm like, come in the other ear. <laughs> on the wedding dance. <laughs> that's a little weird. I mean, it's the richest man in the world here and he's uh, right. Yeah. 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 Okay, you know you're not. But that's my point. You're like, that's hot. You're like, I don't know. Because on the I'm wedding like, if you're day? alpha, why are you even saying it? Like, you should Touche. Be. But you know, some of these tech bros need to be told <laughs> they're an alpha. Sure. So here's my question to the ladies. I get it. You want independence. You got dreams. You've got goals. I get it. You want to have choice. I get it. I get it. You want to have your cake and eat it too, as they say, right? I want to be the boss, babe, and do my own thing, but also be with the millionaire, mogul, rapper, actor, whoever. I want to do it all. But, you know, they say that you can't have it all sometimes. So um, to date this type of man, an Elon Musk, a Kanye, uh, a Shia LaBeouf, a Jonah Hill, whatever, famous, famous A-listers, okay? How willing are you to follow his rules and what are your non-negotiables? So how willing are you to follow his rules and what are your non-negotiables? Go ahead. For, wait, sorry, for who? To date these types of men okay. well, that I mean, are I, setting rules and like, boundaries. Let me know your rules first and then yes. I'll let you know if I'm okay with it. So like, what are your non-negotiables? Like non so you're not Kanye, Elon, these are my, my non-negotiables. Okay. I don't give a shit if you're a billionaire. I don't give a shit if you're taking me to the moon. I'm not going to do this. What are they? Um, well, from what we saw, I have to talk to my family. So if you don't want me to talk to your family, then I guess we're not going to work out. I'm not going to walk around half naked. That, why would you even want me to walk around half naked? Like, that's hey, scary. listen, I need to sell some pillow? CDs out here. Time's to talk. <laughs> <laughs> this is a million million dollars. <laughs> if he's coming out with new music, I'm excited yeah. regardless. Yeah. 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 I just lost a billion dollars. Here's a pillow. Yeah. Hit the streets. Let's go. Jonah Hill, I'm not really you're not, familiar you're not with You're not going to wear that pillow? No. Yo, I'll wear that fucking pillow, bro. Don't be too cool. Um, the Jonah Hill thing, I don't know what his rules were. So It was I like not hanging out with other men. Yeah. Okay, not well, that makes sense. Not photos. Okay. Yeah. That's make, that makes so your sense. rules are, yeah. I'm talking to my family, and I'm not going to walk around in a pillow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Like, I, don't I know, get I like the first one. <laughs> Kanye or Elon wants you to walk around a pillow. Where's the pillows at? No, but she's like half naked underneath. Like I think she was like she was like wearing like a sheer like. Pretty hot in Italy. We were in Italy. You said you'd do nightlife and you would do OnlyFans, no? No. Okay, whatever. (laughs) The point is, you're half naked anyway in the club. In a club. Now you get paid a billion dollars to do it. You get paid a thousand dollars to do that. Well, that's new information. I didn't know. I'm just saying. I think you would walk around a pillow. I think you're just being cool. Sarah, what would you do? Elon, Kanye, Shia LaBeouf, Joan Hill, whoever it is, Matthew McConaughey, like picture that dude, Leonardo DiCaprio. He's like, yo, you're my new girl. What's up? Uh, follow my rules and you're going to live the best life ever. What are I, your non-negotiables? I mean, I, I feel like I'm pretty submissive to a man I respect and admire. Like, um, if I don't, then I'm really argumentative and hard-headed, but hard, hard-headed. Hard-headed? It? Hard, okay. Yeah, hard-headed. It. <laughs> so um, good. But, yeah, I think, like, the talking to your family thing, I think it depends, like, what are the rules. Like, if I was told, like, I couldn't talk to my family, like, that's that's weird to me. But, um, I mean... That unless, was that one guy's rule. I don't even know, whatever it was. Maybe her family sucked. That's Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, yeah. Was, I mean, unless they're, like, really bad people yeah. or something. Like, Again, allegedly. The whole theme of this show is allegedly, guys. Yeah, but I don't really... I don't know. I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Okay, like, so... Yeah. Kanye is an example. He says, listen, Sarah, you're hot. You got a great little figure. Here's a pillow. Let's hit the streets. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Kanye's like a multi-billionaire. I would probably walk around with the pillow. Yeah, you'd wear the pillow. <laughs> okay. Um, who wants to go next? I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, Mariana? Not, yeah. I don't know that I you're could do that the pillow, pillow thing. Mm. Really? Oh. We're in Italy. Nobody knows you. I mean, they, they know you. They know you. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. The paparazzi is following you around. This is true. This is true. That's true. <laughs> I mean, okay. that's okay. 
But I would want to still be stay true to me. Like I'm so willing to submit and do whatever it takes, like to like make the relationship work. But I don't want to lose myself in it either. So if I'm not cool with wearing the pillow, are you really like, gonna let me go for that too? Then I'm like, I guess it's not meant to be. But I'm willing to put up with the boundaries, just depending on like what it is. But yeah, I need to talk to my family. I wouldn't be okay, okay. with that. Okay, let's just take the whole I'm not going to talk to my family thing off the table. <laughs> I, I feel like this going is so we're okay. right. Right. What what I'm trying to understand is this, guys. So, like I hear guys say all the time, "Oh, bro, that girl's so fucking hot, dude. I would cut off my arm to be with that girl." You ever hear a guy say that? "Oh my god, dude, I would cut off my pinky toe to date that girl." I see guys say this. Okay? You've seen this before. "Oh my god, you have no clue." what I would do to be with that girl. And all she is is hot. There's a million hot girls, okay? Um, like, you've heard, Dave, you've heard guys, bro, bro, for that girl, I'd let her do X, Y, whatever it is. Yeah, yep. I see guys say this all the time. So what I'm asking you ladies, what I'm trying to understand is, to be with the richest man in the world, or the best rapper in the world, or one of the biggest actors in the world, you're telling me you won't walk around with a pillow? Like, there's got to be like, like, I'm, I, you might be like, no, yeah, I'm not yeah. doing the pillow. <laughs> what I'm saying is guys are going to cut off limbs to be with women. You still have all your <laughs> 10 fingers and toes <laughs> with the pillow. So I see guys say this all the time. You guys are basically that, saying, if I, can't, <laughs> if I can't, he doesn't let me be me. I'm not, I don't give a shit how many billions we have. Let me tell you something. If Elon Musk wants me to walk around on a pillow and bark like a dog, Adam's a dog today. I don't know. Are you, ladies, no? Okay, I guess I'll walk around with a pillow. All of a sudden. I work out. Fuck so it. cracks are breaking. As long I mean, as I get to keep all Can my your thoughts here. Um, I mean, like, if I'm in love with someone, like, I, I respect their boundaries for sure if they're not, like, delusional and, like, super crazy. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think I'd even be with somebody that... No, Kanye's crazy. Mm -hmm. Elon mm -hmm. Musk is the right kind of crazy. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf is fucking insane. Just <laughs> do, do it. it! You've seen this. <laughs> what Just I'm saying do is it. you will be... Like, is it worth it to be a billionaire? To be on top of the world? Or is it like, listen, if I can't talk to my abuela, <laughs> this whole thing is done, bruh. That's, but that's family, though. Yeah, I get it. Family should be yeah. way more important than money. Okay. All right. David, you know, what do you think about these ladies? Julia? I mean, these are... The, we're really focusing on the pillow and the family. Yeah. If we have some more examples. I'm, yeah. I, I'm asking the ladies, for example. I'm saying, what are your non-negotiables? All I hear is I want to talk to my family. Loyalty. No, but what loyalty. would, you, what would you not do, I think, is the question. Yeah, so that's my oh. point. So what loyalty. What are you not willing to do? So Kanye no. cheats on you. You're leaving Kanye. Elon no. Musk cheats on you. Yes. You're leaving Elon no. Musk? <laughs> no. That's what I'm trying to understand. Okay, you, you just hit the nail on the head. You're saying loyalty. Yeah. You think, you think uh, Andrew Tate always says all the time, you know, when Chris Brown walks into the club, you know, they're thinking, he's loyal. Let me go talk to Chris Brown. No. He literally said He sang a song. Say These loyal. homes ain't loyal. <laughs> All I'm saying is, for ladies out there, for a certain, right, a certain type of men, mm. like, you might have to not expect loyalty or I, walk around with a pillow sometimes or not talk to other guys sometimes. There might be some rules or boundaries that you're not exactly comfortable typically doing, but to get that type of guy, you might have to kind of do that. I think as long as you like provide, protect, and you're present to the point where it's like you're present with your family and you know you handle that, and you're a billionaire, okay, do whatever. As I long think, as you come home. Okay, all, I, 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 this was a science experiment, okay? I just, I picked four random guys who were, the richest man in the world, the, great, the best rapper in the world, uh, one of the more famous actors. And, like, and I'm just saying, hey, here, guys, here's a list of guys. If you're not willing <laughs> to accommodate what these guys' rules and boundaries are, you're going to walk all over the average dude. How are or you even the average what successful dude. I'd rather be with an average dude. When a, when a, just a guy with a million too. bucks and not a right. star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame says, listen, baby, I don't want you talking to your ex boyfriend or your guy friends. 
you're gonna be like, I don't like, I don't like That's these a rules. Given. So I'm just, this is a science experiment to see what you would say. But keep doing what you guys are doing. I'm letting you know right now. For the girl of my dreams, want, for the girl of my dreams, I have nine toes now. That's all I'm saying. I'm willing. A guy is willing to do that. But why isn't a woman willing to do that for the richest guy in the world? Richest though. So why does that have to be about money though? Because yeah, it's all about money, baby. When no. you gave the, re- I mean, the specific examples, like I thought you were asking if we would do those specific yeah. stupid things, right? No. Not it's, like an actual, like actual. Let me tell you something. Realistic. Let me tell you something. The things that uh, maybe some of these guys will have you look the other. Uh, for example, would you rather walk around in Italy with a pillow, or him cheat on you? Pick one. I mean, I'd like, is you rather walk around a pillow? Yeah, I mean, I know. The pillow. All of a sudden, so the pillow, pillow thing ain't day. that bad now. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all not. Sudden, it's not. Around yeah. pillow yeah. Now. I don't know. I could no, I feel like if you truly love him enough. I'm just saying there's <laughs> things that you're willing to accept for the right guy. Yes, for the right And just yeah. figure out what that is. I, I mean, I here, like when I'm Here, end it the lesson. Ladies, we have a bunch of pillows that we'd like to bring you guys up. <laughs> okay. Anyway, guys, this is now the end of the show. Malik, before we wrap up, is there anything that you want to add to this? Yeah, we got a lot of super chats, actually. You do? Yes, we do. Okay, just for, so you know, you never told me we had a bunch of super <laughs> chats. I told you to give me one of those things and we had super I chats. I gave you one. I gave you a few, actually. Really? Yes, sir. And I ignored you or I just yes. didn't see you? You probably didn't see me. Uh, so, <laughs> so, isn't that incumbent on you to be like, yo, Saz, super chat time. And I'm like, oh, straight up, Malik, what's up? Yeah, now it's time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he says, cool is the other side of the pillow. So, Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay, Malik, read the super chats, and then we'll do the happy ending. All right, uh, $99 from Athletic Lifestyle. Mr. Oh, David, shit. a.k.a. Beastly, thanks for the self-improvement motivations. Now I'm crushing it in fitness and everywhere else. Thanks for having him, Adam. Stellar human beings like the video guys. Keep easy, brother. Uh, we got a strong nerd. Cardi B self-admitted that she drugged and robbed men. She suffered no consequences and is, a- is seen as a role model for women. Andrew Tate and Russell Brand get accused of sex crimes without proof slash trial. Cancel immediately. What the fuck? Uh, beat cheeks. Hashtag believe all women is a feminist movement that has turned our society into a matriarchy by accusing innocent men of harsh crimes and making USA weak. Uh, another one. Who was that, Mr. Cheeks? Bean Cheeks, yeah. Yeah, my guy. Here's another one. <laughs> if there's an actual woman with grape allegations on an innocent man and he is proved innocent, should that woman get equally bad prison time? I feel like Repeat people, the question. If there's an actual woman with grape allegations on an innocent man and he's proved innocent, should that woman get. Act- Equally bad prison time. Yeah. Great question. Oof. That's a, that, for another. Like, that, that's so. a conversation mm-hmm. for another time. But great question. Yeah, it's yeah. a good question. All right, and last one. Question for the ladies: When you're evaluating a guy for a long-term relationship, does it make a difference if he owns a home or a condo, townhome, house, all the same? As far as you're concerned, what are your thoughts? Wait, does wait, it make they, a difference? They, a they want to know. Uh, like, no. Wait, does it, it make a difference if he owns a house, a townhome, a condo, or? A, Shack, this know. guy was a kind of. Oh, like the different types of. Yeah. No, it, it makes yeah. no difference. I would as long as he has to live, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to give you that answer. Yeah. As long as he's as long paying, as they don't do shit. It depends yeah. what neighborhood we're living yeah. in. Or is it a nice condo. house or is it a shitty house? Yeah. Yeah. Is it a nice condo or is it a shitty condo? As long as it's clean. I think yeah. the girl left this guy and told him he didn't have a nice enough house, nice enough crib. That what? This guy's ex left him because he didn't have a nice enough crib. He's like, you don't have a nice house. Guy, just whatever it is, keep it clean yeah. and look good. And that's not why she left you. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. We good, Malik? Yeah, we good. He's like, and now it's time. Okay, <laughs> guys, here's what is called the happy ending of the show, uh, where you can highlight uh, what you got going on, your happiest moment, your biggest takeaway from the show. Uh, all your uh, links, uh, YouTube, uh, Instagrams are below. Um, so we'll just go round robin. And give us uh, your biggest takeaway and where to find you. Miss Sarah. Um, thank you for having me again. Always happy to be here. Um, I guess my biggest takeaway is always hearing everyone's different opinions, different outlooks, um, scenarios. Um, and you can find me on Instagram at Sarah underscore Elizabeth. Sarah with two A's at the beginning. There it is. Thanks for co-hosting the show today. She's like, I didn't Anytime. do anything. Yeah. <laughs> Mariano de los Santos. Oh, my. Uh, thank you for having me. I love, like, same 
um, being able to listen to different perspectives and also learning about like what's going on in the world with specific topics that I wasn't aware of and like knowing that maybe I need to put humans above my dog that's like something <laughs> that I'm going to take with me well, you're going to find a man and you're like that fucking guy sucks <laughs> and he's thank your future husband is out there thanking me in, in, but Fluffy's out there like fuck you bro <laughs> he, he is Washington very now. territorial I get it um you can find me on Instagram at Mari DMUA, TikTok, YouTube, and yeah, thank you for having me. There she is, Miss Liv. Thanks for Number having me. Number one club me. in the world. Number one. I've only been there once. I didn't have a great time, but you know. What? Yeah. Um, we, gotta, we gotta do something about that. <laughs> what was your biggest takeaway and where can we find you? Um, my biggest takeaway was to get married and have kids in the next two weeks. <laughs> 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 um, or else I'm gonna be old and ugly. No, okay. no, not true. But. <laughs> Definitely uh, in the next Definitely 10 years. Sad. Yeah. Um, but you can find me at Liv Margray, L-I-V-M-A-R-G-R-E on all platforms. And yeah, it was fun. I had fun. You're crushing it. Thank you. Let's go back this way and then we'll end with David. Go ahead. Um, sorry, I was not prepared. <laughs> I know. We cut you off. Go ahead, Tatiana. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for having me again. I love listening to everybody's perspective. I just would tell people, like, don't be afraid to question things that you're supposed to like just automatically support because you're a woman or a man or whatever. And like, it's okay to question things. And if anybody has an opinion against that, then fuck them. It's okay. And you can find me on Instagram, Tatiana Kitana X. There she is. Miss Aspen. Hi. Thank you for having me again. It was a great time. Like this is all the content that I watch all day. So I love being able to talk about it in person as well. Well, thank you. Well, yeah. And where can people um, find you? You can actually find me with uh, Aesthetics with Assy. I created a fitness page, so now I'm open to the public again. <laughs> well, congrats. All right, Julia and David, I'll let uh, the lady go first and then the gentleman. Thank you so much for having us on here. Um, I think that it's amazing that you have a platform to be able to speak out about all this stuff because there's not a lot of places for people to go to hear the other side of things. So I think it's really awesome that you have this. Uh, you can find me jx.dating on YouTube and Instagram. Mr. Beast. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Yes. Biggest takeaway, Julie's wearing pillows tomorrow around Miami. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, you can How to Beast on YouTube. Check out the videos. That would mean the most to me. Yeah. That's awesome, bro. Make sure that uh, uh, his YouTube is below. Not that he needs our help, but uh, every, uh, every donation counts, guys. <laughs> uh, but thank you guys for being here. Uh, round of applause, Jorge, if you can, for our, our lovely panel today. Um, so before, thank you. So before we wrap up, uh, I'll give you my happy ending. Uh, look, we like to have fun around here. I think we had some serious conversations. I think we told some jokes. Um, I like to have fun. Um, but what I think is happening ro with Russell Brand, I think is an absolute tragedy. And uh, if these allegations are false, which I believe they are, I think they are, I can't say I believe, I think, it's just more evidence of what's happening out there. We've seen it with Tate. We talked about Rogan in a certain sense. We've talked about other people out there with the accusations. Look, some guys are those dudes, the Harvey Weinsteins of the world, the Jeffrey Epsteins of the world. But that is, I would say 99.999% of men are not that type of guy, okay? And they're the, I, I applaud you women for basically, especially you, when you're like, yeah, I used to think, I believe all women. It's like, no, you know? Turns out Amber Heard was lying. Turns out that Lauren Boebert, the congresswoman, was actually lying about vaping. Turns out that women lie too. Turns out that women cheat too. So um, I think at the end of the day here, Russell Brand is now a victim of another matrix attack. And I think it's just sad. I think he's a married man. He, uh, he is a married man. He's got he two family. kids. His wife is pregnant, um, but he, said some shit that the powers that be don't want you talking about. And I find it very interesting, last point here, is the Joe Rogans of the world, the Elon Musk of the world, the Russell Brands of the world are not Republicans. They are not conservatives, okay? Uh, Joe Rogan was a Bernie Sanders fan. Elon Musk has publicly admitted that he did not vote for Trump. You do the math on who he voted for. Um, Andrew Tate aside, um, 
these guys are, are being branded as these right wing conservative talking, but it's like, no, they're just kind of telling the truth, what we see before our eyes and the agenda doesn't like it. So I feel for you, brother. Uh, it's very weird because he just, PBD walked in here today, my CEO, my co-host of the show, Russell Brand just did a show. It was like, we were just on, Russell Brand was just on. And now he's dealing with this and it's kind of crazy. So um, uh, what we say, believe all women, believe, don't believe all men, whatever. It's just like, let's, let's solve for the truth and let's solve for what's right and we'll all be better for it. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for all being here and uh, appreciate you guys all tuning in. Sub to the channel. And uh, we'll see you guys on Thursday with hopefully less allegations from less credible people. We'll see you guys then. Thank you. It's for being the here. Sauce cast, baby. <laughs>